Ooh, hey, it's the Bennington Show on Big Game Week Monday. Big Game Week Monday. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. And I am Ron Bennington. Hmm. Uh, Jen is in here today because last night was Grammy night. She's had a week full of Grammy parties. <laughs> um, <laughs> very, very exciting. I was at one of the Grammy parties over the weekend. Um, it was the Captain and Tennille uh, party. Oh, nice. <laughs> and we had it in our beast. And it was great. <laughs> Captain and Tennille. Uh, broke out love will keep us together and the entire <laughs> Arby's was going crazy that's Jen- unexpected <laughs> like, who knew they were going to do that <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, you know last night um, you had uh, the big Grammy show now there's a lot of people you never see again and then they still bring out Elton John, Sting, U2, <laughs> yep. like those guys in particular like yeah they're hanging around like there's people that they don't Say, like, they had just as many hits as those people, but they don't bring them back. Yeah. But Sting and Elton John are always welcome, and of course, you too. <laughs> like, here, wake your parents up. Sting. <laughs> Every breath. How did I you, like him. How did you like it last night, Jen? I loved it. Love, love, loved it. Now, I uh, was on the news today. There was plenty of people upset about the political nature of the music. <laughs> you know, when I want to see my songs, I don't want them politicized. Really? Yeah, it was Nikki Haley was one of those people. But I, I, it always makes me laugh because you know that every patriotic song is also a political song. Of course. You know yeah. what I mean? But no, but they're just like, this is a nice song. Cause it's <laughs> just on, something yeah. nice about love. Yeah. Uh, but uh, who uh, who was the big winner last night? Uh, Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars. And that, that was a shocker, right? Yeah. I didn't think he would clean up everything. Like I was shocked song. by that, too. Particularly yeah. album of the year mm-hmm. was the one that I was like, I, look, I haven't listened to Bruno Mars's album, yeah. but it would shock me that that would go to a pop act as opposed to, you know, Kendrick had a fully realized album. Jay-Z yeah. had a full, fully realized album. Jay-Z Lord, sat there all night. I know. Nothing. nothing. He didn't even go on stage. Once. Most nominations, <laughs> least nothing. Yeah. Uh, and then Kendrick, of course. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Look like people are being. At first, ISIS came out dancing. <laughs> um, and then I was watching. I don't know. Uh, I think it's called Good Day New York. Is that the name of the show? Uh, yeah, Ivito saying yes. So they had some gossip people on one of them from Sirius XM, but I don't know which one was. And. Uh, the woman was saying, when David Chappelle came out and did his <laughs> That's part. That's so formal. <laughs> I never heard him called David Chappelle. It, it, it makes it sound like you should also throw in a middle initial. And then, David <laughs> P. Chappelle. And so they were talking about, and then, uh, then the lady from Good Day New York was going like this. I can't even understand what they say. Oh, and they're talking about it, and she goes like this. I had to look up on the internet to see what they were saying. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Um, but the, uh, but the nights is mainly music. You know what I mean? Like a lot of award shows annoy you with, but you know, it's, if you like music, uh, there's yeah. some music up there. The Bruno's Mars, when he won best song and brought nine people on, <laughs> mm-hmm. I go, it takes one person to write a movie, but you need nine people to write a three minute song. <laughs> one dude didn't do shit. You know that. <laughs> one guy looked like a hype man up there. It's, it's basically when they get paid for winning. Uh, it's it's gonna end up looking like they just won HQ. <laughs> you know, twenty one fifty a piece. We wrote a number one song. <laughs> Which, by the way, last night was a big HQ because there it was like a big prize last night. Yes, I was blocked out. It, it actually too. said at capacity when I clicked in, which I was shocked by. There was one point six million people. Yeah. Playing last night, I was one of them. I got down. I went to like six or seven, and there was like only a hundred thousand of us left. But they were going on to fifteen questions. Oh, I really? screamed, "What the fuck? I'll never win now." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Black Daddy invited me over there once if I wanted to see the studio and see really? everything that's happening. Yeah, it's Lucky? very small though. I can't move around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a tiny green screen. Anything else surprised you last night, Jen? Um, surprising, I guess when they did the uh, the they read from Trump's book. 
the uh, fire and fury yeah and then they had hillary clinton come out <laughs> yeah that was that that was, that, that was a, a, enough that had everybody mad today <laughs> Uh, well, I thought Cardi B had the best read of everyone. Oh, though. definitely. That was. That was definitely I don't think we'll ever see Cardi B again. That's my <laughs> no, prediction. That's don't my prediction. say that. That's I've been enjoying the, her right, so much. Who's gonna? I'm gonna ask Chris right now. Who's gonna disappear faster, Cardi B or Despacito? <laughs> Cardi B disappears faster. You'll never see <laughs> Despacito yeah. again. The fact that Despacito, I was even shocked that Bruno Mars took song over Despacito. Yeah, because like I've heard that Bruno Mars song a couple times. That Despacito's never not playing. Yeah, but it isn't the most played song. I know, know, but it just feels like it was the song of the year. <laughs> now, now, Chris, I haven't checked on this. I let you pick. How many did you pick? Twelve. Twelve of the big categories. Of the Grammys, the yeah. ones that were aired. Let me go into my wallet here to see what I owe. Uh, and what were we betting per? Ten bucks a category. All right, ten bucks a category. Yeah. And I said this, you pick whoever you want, I'll take the field. Yeah, exactly, you got the field. Yeah, right, 12 categories. Uh, and by the way, Jen is going to be introducing our new interns to us today. What are their names? Carly and Becky. I have the feeling I'm going to love one of these interns and hate another. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go through this. All right, Urban Contemporary Album, I Called Starboy, The Weeknd, I Got It. <laughs> okay. Country Solo Performance and Country Album, I said Chris Stapleton would run the categories, he did, he wins both. Wow. Uh-oh. Rock Performance, Singular Track, I said Foo Fighters, Run, Lost to Leonard Cohen. All right, now how much are you uh, ahead right now? Now I'm ahead 20 bucks. Okay, good. All right. Good for you. Okay. Now, Rock Album, I said Metallica. For Hardwired. <laughs> I thought they'd raise the fist. No. They did not. Uh, the War on Drugs for a deeper understanding one. That is a great fucking album, The War on Drugs. I'm up 10 now. Rap <laughs> album. Mm. I thought Jay-Z for 444 was going to take it. I thought they'd give it gonna a, go. It goes to Kendrick Lamar for damn. All right, so we're, we're <laughs> end up right now. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Exciting gambling. For damn. <laughs> for pop duo group performance. Obviously, I said Portugal the Man for Feel It Still, which one. Uh, now I'm up 10. Pop solo performance. I thought they were going to give it to Kesha for praying, because me too. They gave it to fucking Ned Sheeran. That was a shocker for me tonight. And a lot of people thought Kesha had the moment of the night, because yeah. people finally believed her. Yeah. <laughs> finally. New artist. I said Lil Uzi, because I like the name. <laughs> but Alicia Cara won. Yeah. So now yeah. I'm down 10. Yeah. Lil Uzi's the- already been arrested. <laughs> I can't believe Lil Uzi. <laughs> Album of the year. I thought Jay Z again for four forty four. You wrote that Jay Z about too far. I thought they were, Beyonce was there. I thought they were to give it to him. Bruno Mars wins. Record of the year. I call. I called it Bruno Mars for twenty four K Magic. How did you call that? I called it. And then song of the year again. I said four forty four Jay Z ends up being fucking Bruno Mars. I owe you twenty bucks. Mm. Oh, there you go. Oh, the no. house wins. The oh, house wins. The house always wins. I was so fucking hyped when Chris Stapleton <laughs> won both categories. Like this is it. I've called this thing. Do you know not only did I not see you do the thing, I forgot that we even had the bet. <laughs> Until this, until you told me this so this is like a nice little surprise twenty for yeah. you. Yeah, it's like a little twang twang twang. The fucking hole already. Shit. Maybe I'll throw an intern party for Carly and Becky. Twenty dollar intern. Party. You guys like candy? Let me tell you something, Chris. Yeah. Bet against yourself. That's the smart angle to take in life. If only when it went Bruno Mars instead of stupid old Jay Z. I might. You want to double or nothing on this? I would love to double or nothing. When on we that. finally get around the Godfather uh, trivia, this is a side <laughs> bet. Yeah, so take that twenty. <laughs> I don't have room in my wallet for it right now. Anyway, <laughs> now, <laughs> Chris, here's the. I forgot what what the Godfather bet was. Uh, Mustache. It's I'm a- gonna have trivia against uh, Vito's mom. Godfather one and two. And then who are, if I lose, I have to have a mustache for five months or Vito. <laughs> if I win, Vito gets a mustache for five months. You know, I had thought of this uh, as a bet over the weekend. I think I'm going to leave it up to you if you want to trade out of it. Okay. But everything in your diet stays the same. Okay? Okay. Everything in your diet. Right. But with each meal, you have to have a buttered roll <laughs> for the next six months. And the only beverage yeah. that you can have. Yeah. Is a milkshake. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> Breakfast milkshake, lunch milkshake, <laughs> dinner milkshake. No, I just want to throw something in because yeah. I'm just trying to understand yeah. this. So let's say you wake up in the morning, you're craving a bagel. You have to have that bagel with a milkshake, and a, with a milkshake and a yeah. buttered roll and on the side. And a buttered roll next to your bagel. <laughs> Can I drink beer with... No, no, no. Milkshake. So now, I'm you're not saying that you can pour a little alcohol oh, in God. there. <laughs> Make it nice and boozy. <laughs> Like you could have a tequila strawberry milkshake. <laughs> now, I'm wondering with like the lack of water and only milkshake, how long before you die? <laughs> it can't, it, you can't live on a milkshake. I right? don't think I don't think man can live on milkshake and milkshake alone. And so every morning I'd have a milkshake here instead of a cup of water. Yeah, but could he yeah. dilute his milkshake with water? In yeah. order? Okay. He can Check. melt it down and drink a hot milkshake, I guess. Oh, God. Or put it in the microwave <laughs> and have a soupy milkshake. So, th- But you also wouldn't have a mustache. So it's up to you, Chris. Yes. Yeah. Have milkshake a think about mustache. it. Give me the mustache. All right. <laughs> okay. I don't think you're going to lose this anyway, Deal. No. I mean, this. I don't th- think Vito's mom knows anything about the Godfather. She don't know shit. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I mean, she certainly didn't cheat Vito. No, Vito that was knows how nothing. this this is how it got started. He's like a dope about the yeah, he's a He dope choked about on the, the Godfather game. question. Yeah, hardcore. <laughs> that was a pathetic choking. Ooh, ooh. Uh so a- any highlights for you last night to the big Grammy Awards? Um, I would probably say Elton John and uh Miley Cyrus. I'm shocked to I really hear like that. that. And it's because our it's end our, song. Yeah, so our I was like, almost like, how do you know this song? This is, I was like, it's our end song. She's like, okay, that makes sense. Thanks for like hanging this. around to the end, man. Um, I also like just the way Miley comes out singing. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Jesus freaks <laughs> out in the like, streets. She, she never got rid of that like no. old muckle mouth yeah. of hers. Yeah. I love it. And you know what I really liked about it? She, you could see she really wanted to connect with him, but yeah. he's like with the shades. Yeah. And like she just kept reaching over the piano yeah. like, we're going to connect on this song. She, he's like, <laughs> I mean, he was he, just like in his own he was, world. <laughs> he's fucking six months away from being Tony Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the youngsters were mad at Tony Bennett too for wandering around and not letting everybody else get up on stage. <laughs> if you go and look at some of the stuff, he's just standing behind people way too close when they're getting their awards. <laughs> I know that tune. New York, New York. <laughs> Sung by my good friend Frank Sinatra Sr. <laughs> Uh, I'm very surprised that that was your uh, your thing of the night. And then, obviously, Cardi B was probably the best performance of the night with Bruno Mars. Did you yeah. hear what Cardi B said on the thing? She said she was so excited that she had butterflies oh, yeah. in her belly and vagina. In my vagina. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> she's, she's so funny. And then her face, she's like a puppy who just did something weird. She said it, and she could hear everyone like laughing and scoffing, yeah. and she's just going like... <laughs> What's up? <laughs> what I say? <laughs> now, how did you like the uh, host last night? I forget his name. Corden, James yeah, Corden. James yeah. Corden. He uh, he stuck out like a sore thumb. In my <laughs> yeah. Stop not, uh, with the bad sketches. Yeah, not. Yeah. I guess I was like confused at first because I thought maybe Dave Chappelle would have more hosting. David Chappelle. <laughs> yeah, Mr. David. <laughs> yeah, I wish he would have. I wish he would have hosted. I wasn't a fan of James. Um, they never give out the comedy award oh, it's on the right. Grammys. I mean, I never. I don't know how far you got to go back. <laughs> and then you, last night, you just see all the comics sitting there. I know, like, that's <laughs> kind of cute. Yeah. Just to see Seinfeld not win again like it used to happen with the Emmys. They never gave him an Emmy after really? all those years. Yeah, He sat there like a fucking dope every year. And the last <laughs> night they like, hey, we're going to hand him a, a puppy. He was all fucking happy like a special needs kid. <laughs> he did like it. <laughs> well, you guys would have beat the interns. I know one of, who's got to leave early? Carly. Okay, that makes me yeah. think Becky's just moved into the number one position. <laughs> you want to bring him in one at a time? Yeah, let's bring uh, Carly in. Well, bring them both in, but we'll okay. let Carly take the mic first. Okay. Carly's the one that leaves early? Yeah. Yeah. What's her problem? <laughs> she hates us. <laughs> I hope Vito didn't well, feel uncomfortable. Vito has to walk them over. Why does he camp? <laughs> nice to see you both. Hello. Hi. Hi. All right, Carly, you're number one here, right? Hi. 
Why are you leaving early today? I mean, that's a really bad sign. For I what know. We're trying to do. I have class on Monday. It's like what, the only day. What uh, what kind of class? Uh, I have journalism and then Italian. Yeah, neither one of them is a future. <laughs> Your future is satellite radio. Okay. That's it. Unless you can combine them into Italian journalism. Mm -hmm. Right. Speaking of which. Sounds cool. You know how I know that you love Italy. You said your best time is your life mm -hmm. is Italy. You wasted your time going to Southern Italy because I watched. Uh, I think I'll call you by your name or something. Yeah, whatever that's called. I'll call you by. Call your me name. by your name. Yeah, there you go. It was Northern Italy. Yeah, it's so <laughs> unbelievably it's, beautiful. It's really beautiful, and I wish I had I had ventured up there. Because I was mostly in southern Italy. Like the most unbelievable north I went was Florence. But if you just go a little north of Florence, that's when like I just that's might spend beautiful. the rest of my life in northern Italy. It's gorgeous. And by the way, I've now picked this as my uh, best movie of the year. I am so surprised by that. Now I I'm went really there with excited. A chip to on my shoulder because here's what I said, and Carla. You'll appreciate this because you take Italian. <laughs> I said if this was a 17 year old. A girl with an older person, everybody would be hashtag me too, blah, blah, blah. And the person that he's with is the Winklevoss twins, right? Army Hammer. Yeah. They, he calls himself now the Winklevoss twins. <laughs> <laughs> he is so massive, right? He's a gigantic man with a thin, tiny little boy <laughs> that he, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, he's just... <laughs> And I'm telling you, man, I just fucking bought it. It was so good. I cannot wait to see this movie now. Not only amazing. that, I saw it with a discerning audience. I saw it at the Paris. It's the first time I connected with the audience in a movie in years. Really? Normally, I feel like I'm sitting around a bunch of Vito's, you know, <laughs> where people yell out, awesome. And I was at a movie with Vito once. He yelled out, awesome sauce. Oh, Vito. It was a really exciting part, though. <laughs> it wasn't. It was a fucking previous. It was... <laughs> So, anyway, that's why... Have you been to Italy? Yes, I went to Rome and Florence in high school. You're too far, you're too far south. <laughs> you want to get up as far as you can get. So, what's the big dream? Uh, journalism? Uh, no, well, I'm a minor in journalism, and I study communications, but I want to write comedy for television. Oh, this, this is the perfect place yeah. for it. All the great comedians coming through here. Yeah, I'm excited. As a matter of fact, we're going to name some more, so... Uh, and we actually have quite a few friends writing mm -hmm. uh, for television, but oh. it's a terrible job. You sit around <laughs> yeah. a table with a bunch of people trying to think of funny things, but not funny today, funny in seven months. Yeah. <laughs> What's going to make people laugh in seven months? <laughs> all right, let's meet Becky now. Cool. I like Carly, except for she leaves early all the yeah, time. Yeah, that part, not so sure. Yeah. The Italian journalism, interesting. I like that. Hi. <laughs> Beck, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, from Jersey. Um, New Jersey? Yeah. Okay, Jersey perfect. girl. Right. Yeah. I'm 31. Mm. I decided to make a life change and come into this industry kind of because I was dragged into it. So well, How were you dragged into it? Um, I had a good friend who got into this who was actually working here. Yeah. And um, he had always thought about me throughout the process when it came to just like my voice and how I talk to people. So he kind of inspired me and encouraged me to come down and pursue this. I love it. Cool. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot better than wanting to write comedy <laughs> for a living. I, I like to talk. I mean, I, sure. I don't. I don't well, know if anybody. I don't know if I could go with the writing, but l let me just tell you this: you and Vito in the same room, perfect, <laughs> perfect. All right, great to meet you. Great to meet you too. And I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you got to 31 and go. I'm not going the way of everyone else. I like okay? that too. I'm not going on. I'm going to live my dreams and make them into nightmares. <laughs> Turning dreams into nightmares is what I like to do for young people. That's, <laughs> that's my calling in life. All right, great to meet you both. We're going to have a great semester. You're each required to sn uh, shovel snow if it happens, though. So good to see you guys. I like you nice both. Nice to meet you. Um, Chris, let's have your predictions. Who's going to be the workhorse? Because I'm saying Becky's the workhorse. I mean, she's not leaving early today. Yeah, but here's the thing about Becky. You can yeah. tell she's partier, a cigarette smoker. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she gets down. Yeah. <laughs> or Carly, you can tell she's a homework girl. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right, it's going to be a fun semester. I think so, too. It's going to be a good one. Vito, you are up on the hashtag MeToo movement, right? Yes, I am. So 
Keep your greasy paws off of them. Won't even look at them. Time's up. Well, you, you should be able to look them. at them. Yeah, that's okay. not good. That's not what anyone's. I'll asking. look at them only neck up. Uh, <laughs> Vito, did you did you see the thing you mistakenly called me by your name? Is that the? Have you seen that movie yet? No, I've not seen it yet. You remind me of Army Hammer in that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Just by his own interests and stuff, what he's into. It reminds me of uh, a friend of yours, Gail, who now lives in Austin. Oh, really? That's what he reminded me of. Your story is about, you know, mm-hmm. friendly guy, probably gay on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they had to set it in 1983 because, you know, it's still like, let's uh, keep it quiet right. about these feelings that we have. Man, I can't wait to see it. And I'm very surprised to see it move in your uh, number one spot because I thought that you were not going to It's not your good movies. You know, it's not hard to move to number one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that spot was pretty plot? much open. <laughs> that, that spot was pretty much open. But, you know, like some movies, like what, no matter what their intentions are, if it somehow works, you just have that click. And I wasn't sitting there going, do I like this or not? Or do it? I'm like, just the tone of the movie, the pacing of the movie. Right. The fact that, you know, here they are uh, in, you know, a different part of the uh, world. And before you know it, you're like, yeah, I know. You know, I got it. That's right. It's all, ha- all of us have, you know, we're young and you know, had these feelings. Uh, Chris, more than me, as far sure. as gay feelings. Uh, but, um, but you know what I'm saying? It just doesn't matter. Yeah. That thing. At a certain point, you connect. And the guy who played in Serious Man and Boardwalk Empire is Michael, is it like... Shannon? Shannon? No. Michael Shannon. No, it's like Shulman or something, right? The- My- well, who's I thought Shannon was the other crazy guy from Boardwalk Empire. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about that guy from Boardwalk Empire. Was he in Serious Man? I didn't see Serious no, Man. He was not in Serious Man. What? There's, you, you'd say that you're a movie guy and you've never seen a Coen Brothers film. What's his name, Chris? Stuhlbarg. He's probably the best actor today. And every time he's in a movie, he's a totally different dude. He's really without good. Without doing a Polish accent. You know what I mean? Right. Not doing that Merle Streep uh, or, you know, I've thrown myself into the character. He just plays somebody with a different personality, and he fucking nails it every single time. Yeah, he was so good in A Serious Man. I loved that movie. Yeah, he's unbelievable. And Boardwalk Empire, he was fucking frightening. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the other movie, he, and here he's like, uh, not, not to give him money, but he's a dad who loves his son. That's all. Right. That's all he is, you know. Something that you never had. <laughs> How long do you think you can go with a milkshake at every meal? You know, I don't know. I got to buy a blender. I got to have ice cream at all times. He takes it off the rails. He takes it off the rails. Chris? Yes. Uh, the big uh, celebrity Big Brother has been announced. Before we go over the names, are you excited or let down? I am let down. Wow. Vito, excited or I'm let down? I'm very excited. These are way better names than I thought they were going to get. I don't. I feel like the names aren't big enough that if they come in lackluster, it could hurt the brand. I I was actually surprised because I was feeling so negative about the names that I thought it was going to be 100% reality stars that they were going to call celebrities. And that was going to annoy me. So I was surprised that there were even some on the uh, list of names uh, that I know and would be interested in seeing. Now, here's the deal, and this is always dangerous, Vito. Once something turns to celebrity, it ends up staying there. You know what I mean? And that ends up hurting the show, which, by the way, we've all agreed that they've hurt the show themselves through changes and manipulations. Yeah. To me, the, the game is a, a, a could be a perfect game, but they don't trust in it enough. I agree. Too much uh, manipulation from... Big Brother, right? Never is a good thing. I don't like too many gimmicks, too many. Oh, we threw a wrench in this. I mean, look, I'm fine with expecting the unexpected. I get. I it. don't even <laughs> like that. I don't even like that so much. You have a game. Like, there's no reason to change chess to make it more exciting, right? You know what I mean? It's a good <laughs> fucking game. This game that they had is a good game. All right, let's go through the names, Christopher, 
and let us know before you start on your milkshake challenge. Okay. Is this going to work or not? American Pie actress Shannon Elizabeth. I think it's a good name. I, I haven't seen her in 16 years. I think that that is a really good name. I was happy to see it. I was like, okay, that's, you know, that's the realm that we were talking, right? Yes. We were like, you're not going to get an A lister. You're not even going to get a B lister, but you're going to get somebody who hopefully you know their name and you're going to go, all right. I was surprised that they got both Nicole Eggert and uh, Scott Bayo in the house. <laughs> I'm like, that is going to lead to drama. <laughs> that was a crazy story over the weekend, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Charles in charge of my tits and my ass. Um, then he went and did a 15 minute thing that said he held out till she was 18. And then, like any hey, red blooded American guy, he went for Ugh, it. Me. Uh, she's just like, keep it quiet, dude. Just, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Right. Just <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut up. He's a loose cannon. He's a Nick cannon right now. <laughs> All right, so Shannon, uh, who? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Oh, Shannon Elizabeth. Uh, do we know what she looks like now? I haven't seen her since she was, uh, since American Pie won, which admittedly I saw a couple years later. She still looks pretty good. She's also a professional poker player now. Oh, well, then she'll be great for this game. Yeah. All right, she's my favorite to win. I picked an early favorite based <laughs> on just poker player. Yeah, she's a gorgeous uh, woman. All right, go ahead. Sugar Ray's Mark McGrath. I Sugar love this. Ray Leonard. <laughs> Didn't I, we bring up Sugar Ray should be in there? We because remember I, we were doing the song. I was saying that I was thinking that same exact thing that I was like, did we make a joke about Sugar Ray? We were going, I just want to fly. I swear to God, I think we said Sugar I'm gonna, Ray. I'm going to check the tapes. Why wouldn't you have done that over the weekend? <laughs> uh, let me tell you this though. I think Mark McGrath, smart dude. Uh, I think he's got a real good shot at this. I think that he could be one of those personalities that might annoy people. Like, he might come off strong, but then his personality might get in the way, and he could bother people. Here's my prediction, right? Keep an eye on him, because sometimes, like, when he goes into the diary room, Ethan Hawke is going to come out the <laughs> other side, and we'll see if people can guess. You watch. Convinces me he might win. He's a co worker of ours. He has a show on 90s on 9. He has a show like on the weekends on 90s on 9. Countdown 90s. Hits. Does he come in here? I, I think he voice tracks in LA. <laughs> Alright, that's another reason for me to root for him. <laughs> but I always thought he was a, a pretty fucking smart guy. And they had, a, they had a fucking nice bucket full of hits. Alright, so two so far. And we approve of both. Yes, I approve of both already. And that's, I was shocked already when I yeah. saw those two names. I went, I'm already impressed. Can I tell you, too, with both of them? I believe they're, that they're in it to win it. <laughs> but they're not here to make friends, is <laughs> the most important thing. You think he'll be a comp beast? He could be a comp I beast. <laughs> I don't see either one of them comp beast. I don't see anybody on this. <laughs> I see more for graph. Right. The Cosby Show's Keisha Knight Pulliam. Well, I'm not sure who she was on the, on the Cosby show. She's the baby, right? Yeah, she was the youngest one. She's uh, Rudy. Rudy Huxtable. Well, she's a gorgeous lady. I never knew that Rudy grew up to be so beautiful. All right, I'm, I'm rooting for her. <laughs> I loved, I loved every Rudy time. when she was a kid. She was know, so funny. Rudy was adorable. Now, was she also in the movie, Rudy? Did she play the she's <laughs> yeah. from Notre Dame? Yeah, she's carried off the field, remember? Yeah, I cried. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, I cried. Go ahead. All right, uh, Real, Real Housewife Brandy Glanville. Don't know her. Although, that name seems familiar. She's also a fashion de uh, designer. There's like a couple of them that I know just by looking at them. Yeah. I don't think this is one I think that I've I heard the name before, though. Yeah. Now you said she, is she a fashionista? He's a fashionista, and I think she was the one who had like the big breakup with Eddie Cibrian. Oh my god! It was big in the big in the dish. World. Jen is Jen is nodding her head. It's a dish story. She must understand. Okay, so that's Jen's favorite. I think she's gonna blow up in that house. I think I see this girl going out quick. Go ahead. Is she known for like one of the Real Housewife personalities? Is she like a fighter? Does she stir the pot? 
She was also on, uh, like, E! had a show where they, uh, I forget what it's called. It's like Celebrity Relationships. So she was on that, too. Yeah. But she's kind of, she's catty. She's very, like, uh, emotional. Yeah, she's going to throw she's champagne gonna, in somebody's Yeah, face? she's going to be yeah, sassy. Yeah, she's definitely that type. <laughs> okay. Right. Good right. to have one of those in there. Next is Metal World Peace. Love them. AKA Ron Artest. Uh, this is my, I'm the most excited for this one. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm already shocked that Chris is throwing disappointment. Aside from I a know. real housewife, I thought all we were going to have was real housewives. Let's go through the rest of the list. All right, but this well, is pretty this is good. good. This Ron, is good. We're we halfway. Already. Ron Artest is an NBA champion. Like, I didn't see a former NBA champion getting Plus into the house. Plus, he's crazy as a shithouse rat. Yeah, he's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Metal World Peace now. Kobe carried those teams. Come on. So what? No one's said Kobe's like not going to win there. <laughs> <laughs> he's busy doing an Oscar campaign. All right, former... UFC light heavyweight champ Chuck Liddell. One of the few uh, guys from that thing that I would know their name. I like Chuck Liddell. Yeah. Again, I don't know many of them, but I knew him. So yeah. I was like, all right, that's a name. That was a big one to get too, because it, like you would think they were uh, somebody of that level who's like in the UFC Hall of Fame and everything. Oh, he's in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. Congratulations. Comp beast. <laughs> yeah. There's your comp beast. Good call, Gail. <laughs> this guy, watch him. <laughs> Actors uh, James Maslow. No, nope, no, no clue who this person. He's a Nickelodeon is. guy. Okay, okay. don't Not know the rapist, him, but... right? Not the kid rapist. No, no. <laughs> no. So he was, he's the child. He was in the show Big Time Rush. All right, so that's yeah. what we thought we were getting. So this is another dud. And uh, Marissa Janet Winokur, hairspray. She was the she's hair, a, star of hairspray. Hair, the, the hairspray the movie the musical. or the musical? I, yeah, the musical, not the movie musical, the Broadway one. Yeah, she was a Broadway thing. I think she's done some TV credits that include Curb Your Enthusiasm, Moesha, Ooh. and Steve Harvey Show. I think she was also a friend in the movie Fever Pitch. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. This, is a, this is a, yeah, that's a this love. is this is floating. Uh, TV personality, yeah, Ross Matthews, huge. That's a huge, huge. I don't know him. Get and I'm shocked. He's, oh, I know him. He's from the Tonight Show. Yes, he big, he, <laughs> big. He's a red carpet guy. Yeah, he's on the red carpet. He is a, a judge on RuPaul's Drag oh, Race. I guess he's what? a gay personality. He's gonna fucking snap from the he whole will, experience. He will snap, and someone will snap on him, yeah. and he'll be. <laughs> And like he's the kind with like always with a jab kind of yeah. type, and a little pun here and there. Like he's gonna drive some people nuts, and give, I think it's that is gonna be a really fun one. I'm gonna give a prediction right now too. I think he's gonna have an odd uh, friendship with Meta World Peace. I think those two. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I can't believe those two are friends. Good. I see that like a like a Zach and Frankie Grande situation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he's also a Big Brother fan. All right. See, that's good. That's Dark good to Horse know. Dark Horse, then, yeah. win that, yeah. And he'll be kind of interviewing people in the house, which is, you know, he'll, strong. He'll do the talk show like uh, we had last year. Yeah, that, that worked out well. And finally, 2015's Miss Columbia, Ariana Gutierrez. Uh, that's, a, that's a throwaway. I think yeah. she's, is she the one that Steve Harvey messed up? I think she... Yeah, mo- that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. No. I mean, let's face it. If we're in Colombia, I'd be going nuts. Yeah. But we're not, all right? I think she is one of the, the girls who was a part of the mix-up with the Steve Harvey mix-up. But that isn't the last one. That's all the names I had. Oh, no, this you, is why you... You don't even down. know. We've got the big... Part of Trump's White House staff is going to be there. Oh, shit. Trump's White House staff... Amorosa is going to be oh, in there. Shit. How did you not see that? That was like most of what I saw was only about Amorosa. Go over to the eye bag and all the names are there. Vito, you just moved back to the number one spot. Looks <laughs> like somebody's going to be drinking milkshake. <laughs> uh, here's our buddy uh, Ken in Rhode Island. Hey, Ken, what's up? I, uh, well, you've moved pretty far past the Grammys. You still want to talk about that? Sure. We can always go back to anything. Okay. Um, well, I just wanted to weigh in on, uh, you know, I know I shouldn't attach much importance to the Grammys because it's often ridiculous, but the best album of the year thing just pretty much pissed me off for good. Who would you uh, pick this year? Clip. Well, look, they had the nominees were Kendrick for Damn and Jay-Z for 444 and Childish Gambino for Awaken My Love and Lord for Melodrama and Bruno Mars. Now that means you had 
four, whatever you might think of Lord, you had four artists in that category and one really good entertainer, but not what I, I mean, he's like an old school, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. He dances, he sings. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, there, there's a couple of people to me that have just based their life on Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. and he's one yeah. of them. He's absolutely one of them. Yeah, another one is doing the uh, the Super Bowl yeah. this week. I think Justin Timberlake, every time I hear him, it's like, oh, did they find a track by Michael Jackson? You know? Right. right. And I mean, look, I, I had the same exact feeling you did, is I was shocked that a pop act would win Best Album, because normally that's not how right. pop is enjoyed. Right. So, I mean, I feel like all of those people, whether you like them or not, whether that genres that you're interested, all of them had fully realized albums that came out that everybody said, oh, you should check out this album if you like this genre. Right. So I was surprised yeah, I mean, to see somebody who is, yeah, a pop entertainer. Yeah, that, I mean, Childish Gambino, I mean, it came out at the end of the year in 16, I guess. So that was on the, that was number one on my list last year. And the Kendrick album was like number two or three on my list this year. And yet, you know, neither of those albums won or, you know, even if Jay-Z had won, I would have been happy. But it's just so out of touch. It's unbelievable. I mean, you know, hip hop and rap is like completely dominating now. 100%. And the, Grammys, and the Grammys are still... And then the other thing that bothered me, if you look at Facebook during the Grammys, you got all these older white guys, of which I am one, um, bitching about how, you know, well, Conway, Kanye won this many Grammys, and my favorite white group, you know, the Beach Boys only won this many. And, you know, and it's just taking shots at, Hip hop artists and not like dealing with the fact. I mean, they sound like my father sounded when the Beatles came on. Yeah, it's really, really true. There's no doubt in the world that you honestly do musically become your dad. <laughs> yeah. You know, the stuff when I was younger is the best stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just, I don't know. It's just the whole thing. Uh, just, it, 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 when you started the show today with stuck in the stuck in the past i mean i'm like yeah that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly right <laughs> that's yeah. um, but that is uh it is a weird thing about music is that we that no one spends all their time going the best movies whereas when i was in high school you know what i mean yeah. or no one right. say the best novels came out when i was in high school i know but we really put music in a time and place and we hold on to that yes and we also take credit for it in a way that i don't think we take credit for books or movies we don't say i mean even though it's like okay the 70s had like some of the greatest movies but you don't really think of it the same way like hey because you were a kid right Right. i didn't act like we we made taxi driver (laughs) right (laughs) you know but i do feel like that way about aerosmith right exactly i add add one more thing if i could before i leave uh, which is that School Barge is amazing, and you remember that he was the great, you know, much put upon character in the last season of Fargo, and he was also in The Shape of Water, uh, completely unrecognizable when I first saw him. I mean, he's been in a million things lately, and he's been, as you said, just completely different and great in all of them. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. Peace. Right. Bye bye. You too, man. Um, yeah, he's an unbelievable actor. He's just an unbelievable actor, and I never can remember his last name. Yeah, he he was really strong in Fargo too, because he played that kind of unlikable weak the character with weakness, which Terrible. is is always uh, which actually he the, was like a weak bully. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and like you were so against him. Chris Stanley, the weak bully. <laughs> yeah, he is. He was so Chris Stanley, <laughs> and like. Picking on a veto type. I was just talking to Bonnie over the weekend that they never like bring up the kids. We were both saying like how good it feels when you're bullying somebody. <laughs> that it's like really feels like God. I finally got my life together. Mm-hmm. Picking on this other kid. Well, like particularly when you have an audience of other people laughing. Yeah, and they love it. Like if you say something that is bullying. Like I mean, obviously physical violence isn't I mean, I guess it can be funny to boys. They seem to think it's funny. But like if you get a good like 
if you get a good like cut on someone and everyone laughs, yeah. that could stay with you all week. Sure. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> sure. Remember when I said that and everyone yeah. laughed? Yeah. It was so good. It was great, wasn't it? Was it was so good. Everyone liked I hurt that person's feelings. I hurt so. them, but I moved up a couple <laughs> spaces myself. It's like tackling someone in football. It feels great. It feels great. Well, I'm going to... Because I don't know, I don't think any of you guys are watching Crashing this year, right? I am. Vito. I, I'm going to give boy. away a, a plot point, Vito. So, no, it's not a plot point. We know it's going to move along like his fucking actual career, right? Yeah. So, he's just, this season, because I had to watch six of them or something, he learns about uh, the alt rooms. He's like, what? What do you mean, alternative rooms? So, the Lucas brothers, and I'm going to quote this from the show, they say... The alt rooms are for the people who got called fag in school. And the other rooms, and they're basically talking about the cellar, the Boston Comedy Club of Carolines, are for people who called people <laughs> fag in school, right? <laughs> and I thought, this is the, and it also goes for the audiences as well. In sure, my opinion. Yeah. I mean, you're not just talking about the comedians, but those all audi audiences are so ready for their people. You know what I mean? Don't go in there from a different viewpoint and think that you're going to be accepted. You know what? I agree with you, especially the way you said, I think it applies to the audience as well, because I am one of those people that I float both ways. I enjoy yeah. both what would you you would call like the New York comedy scene and right. that style of comedy. But I also enjoy a lot of alt comedy acts. Yeah. And I feel like that kind of I, I feel like I float between those two for that same reason. But and I thought th there's the defining, you know, I mean, the Lucas Brothers, they brought in the, the wisdom of the <laughs> ages. But I will say this. There goes the host of the Today Show just walking by. Mm. Uh, if you looked at Big J. Louis J. Gomez, you know, go through the list of the New York guys, right? They got called fag in school. Right. They, they just are... didn't take it so personally. <laughs> it didn't go home and crush them. But you get called fag by your friends all the time back then. Right. That that is true. That that is also a personality who could dish it and take it both. And I think that that exists. Yeah. And, I, and, and they, and they left it for what it was, you know what I mean? Like just ball busting. Right. If you think of it as just ball busting, it's just ball busting. So it really is the way that you take stuff, but the alt scene, which if you're going to be totally honest, got really made by a lot of mainstream people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like people that already had kind of made it in the mainstream are the ones who started the alt scene, which is always fucking hilarious to me. Right. Um, but the alt scene has really brought us some very popular duds, but I guess things could be said of the mainstream as well. Yeah, I think that you there are uh, great acts in both of those yeah. styles, for sure. Um. We are doing, uh, and this came out of nowhere, that's why we tell you to pay attention to our Twitter, Doug Stanhope, uh, tomorrow for Unmasked, and I just read his book over the weekend, and um, there was a pa passage that really made me laugh hard, where he told Jimmy Fallon, you gotta change everything about you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. He described what Jimmy Fallon was doing, and Jimmy Fallon had talked about it on his Unmasked. He used to go out with a troll doll for some reason and then say, I don't know, the troll doll was fucking trying out for different shows. And then he would do impressions of people and they would he would sing popular songs and then the word troll doll would go in there. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> and he said it was just fucking terrible. And he says the fucking crowd used to fall on the floor laughing because he was cute and could do impressions sure, yeah. and he was very likable. But I think it's so funny to tell people, someone, you're going to change everything, dude. Because, and then have that person go and become, become a huge fucking, success yeah. and a late night show host. Yeah, that's so funny. I have advice for you. Do not what you're doing. Do nothing that comes natural to you. Change it. <laughs> they're like, but the people are laughing. Forget them. Forget forget their laughs. They don't know what they're talking about. This isn't good. Uh, well, Big J talked about that in his own mask, too, where he was like, 
that's when he only used to work black rooms and used to take his uh all of his clothes off till he was down in his underwear <laughs> dancing around like a fucking <laughs> <laughs> and, it's so uh, funny. He said, I, yeah. I love that idea of him because he is a person who's in a position of power, but at that stage of his career, he's like, anything for a laugh. <laughs> like, the vulnerability is so apparent, which is adorable. Look at me, everybody. I'm a prop comic. <laughs> it's your favorite comedy bit. <laughs> and he was saying how, like, Keith Robinson was telling him, you know, hey, you're a funny guy. You got to do this and that, you know? And he was like, um, but I just killed. Well, you didn't. You know what I mean? He was feeling very confident in himself. That fucking bit of him in front of a room full of fucking black people just dancing around as the chubby white guy is the funniest shit That's in the world. really funny. Really, really funny. I was just with Jay over the weekend, and he is so funny. And he's oddly likable, despite all the things that he says that I mean by the room. He was talking about this woman's vagina in front of her children. In, you know, (laughs) very graphic, and the room was fucking dying. Now, what do you think it... It, that type of personality is versus another comic who's also funny but could never get away with saying that. Like, give me an example of another comic who is funny but you don't think could get away. Any other. Any other. Any other <laughs> funny comedian could not sit there and talk about that. But I, again, I think that it's because he's oddly sweet he's laid back he's sitting on a stool he's not aggressive you know what i mean you're not dealing with don rickles here but he will fucking say stuff <laughs> that you're right most people would get beat up for and i don't even think it's a way of getting away i just think that he finds that the terminology and even that fact that we do the act yeah. these acts to be funny who knows? There, there's intangibles to all life. There, there's always one kid in the family that could say something and another kid who can't. You look at any band, any fucking band. One person could say any fucking horrible thing. Everyone's fine. The other one says something about that horrible person who says horrible things. And I was like, oh, how dare Mick Jagger open his fucking mouth about Keith? <laughs> and Keith would be like, Mick has a little dick. He can't fucking play an instrument. He stinks. And he's nothing without us. And then uh, Mick will say, I'm worried about Keith. He has a drug problem. And everyone's like, shut the fuck up, Mick. <laughs> Even though Mick is the fucking lead singer, know. the cool guy, Keith gets away from it with everything. Uh, Lennon could say anything he wanted about McCartney. Yeah. Anything. McCartney would say one thing and everyone's like, shut your goddamn grandma face. And I still feel that way. Like, I'll read something that John Lennon said about him, about the, and I always go, oh, John, that's, well, that's John. But to this day, anytime Paul says something slightly, I'm like, oh, I really got out of my skin. If Paul said, well, that song is credited to both of us, but I wrote the whole song, people would be like, how fucking (laughs) dare you? (laughs) <laughs> try to take that song away from John Lennon. And you hear it, it's just like, you know, fucking Octopus's Garden or something that is <laughs> fucking ridiculously about. Paul. You know what I mean? Just the <laughs> dumbest Paul Maxwell Silver Hammer fucking song you've ever heard in your life. And it was, oh, you shut your fucking mouth. He was but a genius. Every band is like that. Every fucking band. Yeah. That goddamn Metallica drummer can't say shit. <laughs> People Lars? fucking hate <laughs> Lars. And then the other fucking idiot up front, they love him. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's always fucking funny. And, he, uh, uh, and, and families are the same way. One kid can say whatever, the yep. other kid can't. My older sister couldn't say nothing when I was a kid. <laughs> but she also was very sensitive. Every meal would end with, and I, she was 11 years older than me. And every meal would, and when I say end, I mean end in the middle with her yelling out, I never asked to be born. And run up the steps. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's an unbelievably valid point. None of us asked to be born. <laughs> Certainly not into this. Don't put your elbows on the table house. <laughs> were, you, were we military style now? Is that it? <laughs> My friends are eating on a, laying on a couch. 
<laughs> but you know what? Look how it is. Remember we got on that fucking uh, elevator today with that dude, bro, chewing his fucking big cud. Oh, my God. This guy was chewing on his gum really loudly, and I was watching him. And then I watched him choose to double time his chew. So he was like, and then all of a sudden he went. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to snap. I'm going to snap. I'm going to fucking <laughs> lay you out. <laughs> and then we all just were glaring at each other. <laughs> Can you believe this guy? Which I'm sure there are plenty of people who go, go in the elevator and do whatever. But he has a certain look, a certain type. He looks like a creep. That he is just like a corporate bro. Yeah, corporate bros do very well these days. <laughs> Fido's our corporate bro. Yeah, <laughs> he's as close as we could ever get yeah. to that. <laughs> um, well, Vito is fake. Chris is the real deal. And right. Chris can annoy you, but you're like, that's honestly Chris. But, you know, it's funny because both of them, you're like, Vito, I think you could be more real. Chris, you could stand to be a little more fake. <laughs> I would love for Chris to be more fake. That would be my fucking dream. Although the few times that we have caught him being fake, he stinks at it. Oh, like, Vito mean, yeah. can do that. Like, yeah. Vito can be in a conversation with someone down the hall and be like, How's your kids? And you kind of, I'm like, oh, I guess he knows how to do that stuff. Chris cannot do that. And anytime he tries, I want to jump out of my own skin. Well, here's the thing with Vito. He told us this big idea he had for the uh, Super Bowl, how he was going to go around to all the clubs and get things. He never did it. Chris busted his ass all week. Yeah. But he's coked up and he's taking pills. <laughs> and it makes you, it makes you think he's not doing a good job. But he's coked up on pills. Those help to do the good job. I guess. But you're going to end up floating face down in the fucking pool. That's not very professional. Chris. And Vito just went running around to Grammy parties, yeah. which he didn't fucking have any stuff for the show. You know what I mean? It's for his own personal life. It's selfish. Well, we didn't, we didn't end up going into the Grammy party. Somebody ended up getting jumped outside right before we went in, and we decided it wasn't the best party to go into. <laughs> oh, I would have loved to have that party. I wish you would have got jumped outside. <laughs> That's but then Chris sends me a thing. They got 50 names so far, which is great. But Chris tells me he got 48 of the names. 48. What? Mm -hmm. Is that true? And it, it's like, if these were states... Fucking Vito would come in with Alaska and Hawaii. <laughs> Two states no one cares yeah, about. Yeah, we're not really even sure. We're we talking about call mainland. Um, remember when they said uh, that they, there were missiles heading to Hawaii? Yeah. I heard on the local news, on the lighter side of the news, it looks like missiles are heading to Hawaii. Oh, that's terrible. They're not a real state, okay? <laughs> they came in 50th. <laughs> I saw this article in the in a Florida newspaper, that they were furious that Florida came in 50th as the worst place in the, <laughs> the worst state, right? And, and they said, in every category, and I'm reading it, the list was made up by thrillers. <laughs> it's not a real list. Yeah. Like, if the government put that out, <laughs> be or hurtful. the Better Business Bureau, or something, but thrillers can make up any dumb list Chris they want. Chris already calls them troll lists. <laughs> they yeah, they're fucking troll lists, because they like to fucking troll people. All right, right chill. Right, dude, We're not man. that upset. You're not even fl Why can't from you just, Florida. You just stopped coughing blood a second ago. Did you get your test results yet? No, I have to. Um, I see the doctor this week or Monday. Monday of next week. You told us that you saw the doctor on Friday. I saw the doctor on Friday, but I don't. I don't have. Um, I got like the. I went to the place where they do the tests. That's in the same place where my doctor is. But it isn't the test an MRI? Can it's they just look at it right and now? Right test, now? No, oh, they, that looks they, bad. They want me to, no, they, they're not. They're legally not allowed to tell you anything. They're legally because the news is so bad that he'll start oh, running God. down the street. What did like, you say to me? We need someone with good bedside manner to drop this on you. Um, I'm sorry, Chris. I'm looking at this. You have two packs of cigarettes where your lungs are supposed to be. Oh, Jesus. That's, that's good, right? Dude, it was so fucking warm Saturday night. Everybody at the stand is fucking hanging out in shirt sleeves. Yeah. In January, it was 60 degrees at night. I saw we, people in shorts and I couldn't believe it. I saw people walking around my neighborhood, which I understand like it was warm, but I was like, are we short? We're ready to bust out shorts. I'm there was a woman in my neighborhood Saturday wearing a micro bikini, <laughs> barely covering her <laughs> vagina and the, I mean, just enough. 
I mean, it seems like Ariola's peeking out at that point. Oh, oh my that's God. The, he's the guy that can't say stuff. <laughs> he was, if Jay would have said that, we'd have been laughing. We would be, and Jay, we'd, I would be like, oh, Jay, you can yeah. say whatever you want. Chris. Oh, Jay also told me that Chris says all the time, if anything happens to Soder, I definitely want that show. Chris. He told you that? Yeah, he did. Well, that was just between me and Jay. Yeah. Mm. And this is um, something that should probably go to HR yeah. as part of the hashtag Me Too unit. <laughs> so um, Jay asked him about Jen, right? And Chris says, and I quote, she has a great fart box. Oh, my God. And that God. is disgusting. I got to stop talking to Jay. That's all I'm learning from here. <laughs> Why haven't you learned that he yet? says everything to everyone, he does He Ron, everything. You were on the air when you said it, son. Oh, Jesus, no. Uh, our buddy Lois in Manhattan wants to talk to us. Lois, what's up, buddy? Yeah, hey, what's up, guys? Um, I- I'm with Chris. I'm not, um, I'm not excited about this celebrity big brother. I think that they're... Um, who did you they, expect I, I, I think, to get? Robert Redford? <laughs> That'd be great. I, I think they're taking a the low road because, I mean, when you look at Brandy, I mean, she had the drama with the Whitney Houston thing, and her birthday is in February, so they're going to want her, you know, they, they basically put her in there just so she could cry about Whitney Houston. I didn't even know about any of this. Yeah, Rudy, the Bill Cosby rape stuff. Um, Bill Cosby rape rape stuff, Rudy? You know, oh, bullshit. God. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, you know, I think I, I, I think they're going, you know, the trash route, and I think it's gonna just make the show look bad. Like if, if these celebrities do say that type of stuff, and you know, the, the celebrity housewife if she goes crazy, it's just gonna Big Brother's gonna be seen as like a trash reality show, and it's really not, you know. Uh, well, they fuck it up for themselves, though. You know what I mean? Like I can't sit around and tell these ham and eggers how to fucking turn into caviar. I can't do it. <laughs> they have caviar, and they're fucking, they're handing out a pork roll every single day for breakfast. <laughs> they should, they should I mean, I understand they want to bring in viewers, but I think they're like, they're bringing in viewers at the wrong time. Like, it's just the, 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 the Amorosa is going to be fucking insane. Yeah, that's going to be. It's going to be Trump fights the whole time. It's going to be nuttiness. Well, well, might as well put Trump in there. One. I, I bet you she's going to give away on day one. I don't even think she's. No, she'll take. She'll she'll fucking tap out. And also, celebrity. Like, I think Big Brother will be going. Like, we need to keep her in the house. Like, they'll throw a red to keep you, her in the house. They're paying her a lot more money than they're paying these other fucking people. Yeah, I bet she's, she's getting, getting a lot crazy money. She's getting a lot more than Miss Columbia. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, she, she's gonna get like that. Um, like that Paul immunity or something. Oh like, yeah, five she's five. gonna get Paul immunity. Mm-hmm. You're right. <laughs> Friendship. Uh, so all right. French good French. to talk right. to you, buddy. Right. Hey, there is a, a, a whole chapter in the book on a Costa Rica, and uh, I'm I'm talking about Doug Stanhope's uh, book, which is really really funny. I mean, it's funnier than the one where his mom died, by far. <laughs> and um, but there is a uh, a whole chapter on Chris's in laws' home place of Costa Rica and the cheapness. Uh, of hookers and the easy gambling he would go to Costa Rica every single year until the local government got a little fucking scary when he went to get back on the plane. Really? Yeah, that always happened. You know, you're always looking out in South America, I think, in my opinion. (laughs) You can't ever trust it. All the online gambling sites that take action, they're all in Costa Rica. Every single one of them are just out of Costa Rica. And you might go down there this summer. Yeah, I might. That's the thing. So there's a picture in his book with him and Two Costa Rican hookers that are holding up his albums in the room. (laughs) And you know, my friend Flats enjoys Costa Rica. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Similar vacation type. Yeah, except for a lot more Coke, I think, than Uh Doug gets. Doug is still very much part of alcohol and mushrooms. And uh, uh, and Flats is into something. Well, he's just into Coke and something that he calls go-go juice. (laughs) <laughs> which is just really a liquefied um, cocaine beverage. <laughs> but one of these prostitutes looks so much like Chris's girlfriend, I, I couldn't believe oh it. Oh, really? my God. Well, I'll have to pick up this book, then. Did not look like her with her clothes on. Okay. But once you get the clothes on, you're like, that is the spitting image. You know the images, huh, in this book? Where are you guys going for the big game show? Uh, I believe for the big game, we're going to be in Brooklyn. Now, I was watching the Today Show. And this fucking infuriated me. So they're doing, 
here's things that you can make for the big game. We've got a Boston lo- uh, lobster roll. I got a real Philly cheesesteak. They're l- using real che- fucking steak. Just oh. big slices of steak. That's not right. And I'm screaming at the screen. How's that a fucking cheesesteak today, show? And that made, made me eventually go over to Good Day New York. Good. Somebody needs to teach them about steakums. The now verified Twitter account. <laughs> I'm just going to give... What's uh, what's her name? Uh, Rosanna Scotto. All right, Rosanna Scotto, whose parents own an Italian restaurant on the east side. Um, I'm just going to do this impression of her. When they showed... Um, remember when all the big hurricanes were coming? They showed the one from, like, years ago where... Animals that actually got out of the zoo. There were animals that got out of the zoo. They just showed this hippo walking around, and <laughs> Rosanna Scotto goes like this. What's that, a rhinoceros? <laughs> <laughs> and I immediately fucking went backwards, watched it, went back. You know what I mean? Oh my I replayed God. it seven times. What's that, a rhin- rhinoceros? <laughs> I don't even understand what they're saying on there. <laughs> all right we got david duchovny coming in here today david duchovny is on the x-files do you really believe in all that do you really be- he's playing a, a TV an show. you really believe that they're out there something's out there it's not a documentary but you were saying it on your show <laughs> <laughs> so fucking crazy funny and that's why everyone says to me about my friend jennifer hutt Right? Mm-hmm. Why does she keep trying? Why does she keep trying? Because she's as good as anyone on TV. Absolutely. She's as good as anyone on The View. She absolutely all can. <laughs> I turned on The View today. They all had a fucking flu. And uh, Megan McCain is on there, and she was talking about the Me Too human, unit and the feminists because the president said that I'm not a feminist. I like men and women. Um, <laughs> but she was saying she is a feminist. And they won't, you know, recognize her because she's anti-choice. And I'm like, but that's one of the main things. That's what they like. To be in it. I, I couldn't be able to say, I'm a Christian, but I'm pro-choice. Let me march with you. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? They were, you're against <laughs> right. one of the tenets, one of the exact things, one of the requirements to be part of this. You also couldn't say, I'm a feminist. But I don't like gays. Right. I don't like gays. Actually, choice was one of the um, one of the debates that was happening when the women's march happened because there was a, a group of women who wanted to be part of the march, wanted to, um, to be one of the uh, organizations that were like a sponsor, whatever you right. call it. And they were feminists that are pro-choice. And they said, can we be part of the mar- march? And so there was a lot of debate. Anti-choice. Um, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're they're yeah. pro-life, I mean to say. And there was a lot of debate. And then what they landed on is that is in direct conflict with women's rights. And so, right, like we we like that you are feminists in your own way. But this you can't really be a yeah, part of this. Just like group. you could be Black Lives Matter and say, except for mixed race. Right, okay, exactly. That's that's disgusting. <laughs> if I'm going to be totally honest, that's disgusting. A lot of it comes in, and, you know. Uh, but it, uh, no one ever points out these things. What is that, a rhinoceros? <laughs> <laughs> food I love people? that you just kept rewinding. <laughs> oh, I got to hear it again. <laughs> oh, I don't like beets. <laughs> just fucking fake it. It's the fucking, they're making a beet salad. You saw it if you ever read your scheduling. Thing. I wish it was like the idea of just being like, no, thank you. No. <laughs> After they make it for you, I couldn't possibly. It looks gross to me. We're going to talk movies this year. Well, I like the movie Grease. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't come out this year, though. Um... To me, John Travolta is a real hunk. But you don't see him anymore. What happened? <laughs> What's with all these other movies? <laughs> <laughs> This is fucking hilarious. And that's New York City. That's <laughs> New York City. <laughs> what are they doing? Jumping around in one of those videos? They got viral. Did you see that? Yeah. That's very viral right now. It's all over. I got it from my sister-in-law. She says, take a look at this. Chris, you're uh no, Vito's viral video guy now, right? Yeah. I'm breaking news, boy. Okay. Breaking uh-huh. news, boy, viral video. But have you noticed, Chris, you haven't broken any news and he hasn't gone viral. I am, I'll say this, 
two two days before flipping you guys back again. I like being uh, I like being the boy that has the breaking news. What's your problem? You're going out to too many parties and then not going in? No. Too hungover? Two fucking comics is all you got? This guy gets 48? Fido, I wanted to believe in you. First 48, that's what I thought you told me you were going to help him. Yeah, I, just, I don't like his attitude lately, so I didn't want to help him. It's okay. your fucking job, None bro. of us like his attitude, yeah. but it's our jobs. It's terrible attitude. We all hate his attitude. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not coming into the show today. I don't like Chris's attitude. It's like working with Harvey <laughs> Weinstein in here. <laughs> no. Well, remember that thing you said about areolas? Yeah. So, well, that was just the observation. You That's said that in front of ladies. <laughs> Everyone has A an woman areola. can't hear the word areola. Um, what's a bit, oh, I know the big viral video for me is the uh, baby chick being born and the kindergarten kids singing. This video is the cutest thing I have ever seen. Like immediately I was like, oh, okay, that's going to be cute. And then these kids are like next level adorable. You know, we always think that birds have it easier than us because, you know, a mammal's birth is so hard. All right, that guy just went and fixed his pretty hair in our... <laughs> always fucking, the men. Yeah, always the men. The, we- the women are conscious that they don't want to be checking themselves out and like, men have checking no their idea. teeth. But men, for some reason, only see their own reflection. Dude, there was a, we used to have a workout guy on our show in Florida, and Flipper was eating sushi in a restaurant and saw him come up with no shirt on and start flexing in the window. <laughs> and you can see him perfectly, oh but I guess he couldn't God. sit up. And he was just sitting there flexing <laughs> and fucking flip. And I'm telling you a fucking 20 year old story, but we fell on the ground laughing. <laughs> and he was doing it like he'd sold her back and forth. <laughs> all right. So, first of all, it's not easy to be born if you're a bird. No, it doesn't look fun. All right. Go ahead and hit it, Chris, just to hear these kindergarten kids. <laughs> Who are these people? Tell them happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Chippy. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Not that loud. <laughs> Not that loud. And then just cha 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 quietly afterwards. <laughs> now, when did kids start to cha cha cha? Because it not, it always sounds the same. Kindergarten kids sound the same as when I was in kindergarten and when my great grandparents were. I in don't know how that happened, but I remember going to kindergarten. Yeah. I remember singing "Happy Birthday" and everyone said cha cha cha, and I was like, oh, "Is that what we do?" And I've never done it again. I've never heard it outside of a kindergarten, but for some reason. Little children add the cha cha cha, and I don't know how. They they are the same uh, people that will yell so good, so good during Sweet Caroline. <laughs> There's no reason for it. The song was already written perfectly. Don't add get laid, get fucked to happy birthday. <laughs> but that way, the kids have a, a way of talking. Good morning, Mrs. Mrs. Pattinson. And then all, at our school, it would always be like this everybody got. Philadelphia, <laughs> because it'd be like, where was the in- oh, every question we had? If it was geography or history, the answer was Philadelphia, <laughs> <laughs> and you would know that going in. But then you would misspell Philadelphia. Like. It's very hard for a first and second grader. It's not easy Big for one. anyone. You had to write Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's ridiculous. by the time I finished, we were at fucking recess. <laughs> But that way the kids talk, it's so goddamn funny. You may start. <laughs> um, all right, I got this message from the iBang. They're, but both Vito and Chris are into outdated breaking news. Oh That's their God. thing. That's I am very cool. proud what? of you guys for this, though. Neither one of you sent in the score of the fucking... Uh, uh, of the game of the weekend, not Pro Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, fuck that shit. I haven't seen a Pro Bowl, Chris. I'm gonna be honest. If I seen one since 2001, I'm shocked. I saw five minutes of it. Just flipped over, only enough to see. I think Drew Brees yelling at his kid, and that was yeah, it. And that was kind of cute. But they were acting like those kids were actually fighting, and they were just roughhousing. Yeah, they were just playing around. And then he had that moment where he's like, "Cut it out, you 
better stop it. And it was just really cute. And they're like, mm, boy. You know what? <laughs> like, people, are, um, people always want, like, you know, boys and girls. But a family of all boys or a family of all girls are always the funniest ones. I know. You know, there's always a, it's either a rough house or girls in each other's business. But yeah, but both of them, I would say, having friends who had both of those setups, yeah. every time I was over the house, in different ways, I always felt like it was a hostile environment. Mm -hmm. I felt like the boys were so violent and then the girls were just nasty and right. mean to each other and screaming and crying. And I was like, wow, I have a brother and we just kind of are pretty quiet most of the time. Dude, my two girl cousins were unbelievably cruel with each other. Yeah, really unbelievably mean. Unbelievably cruel. And I would spend time being on one of their sides. It was always a two against one. <laughs> they never once in my life turned on me. <laughs> but somebody was always out when the three of us got together. <laughs> that is weird about life, though. Now, you try to have these conversations. Look who we're sitting with. Two fucking only children. I know, they don't understand. I mean, Two Je mistakes. <laughs> Jen is a, a two-girl house, and we all and know they still fight. They fight over clothes, and I'm like, what do you give a shit if your sister puts on your fucking shirt? I know. You guys are about the same size. Come they're, on. They're, they're two... I mean, Jen's the sweetest person you can meet. And her sister is sweet. Yeah. And then they don't get along with each other. How is that possible? If and you I, guys met each other, if you were not related and you met each other, you would like each other. You would go, oh my God, she's so nice. I love her. <laughs> Thank you. Now, look, if I came in here and Chris was wearing my fucking coat right now, I wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> I'd be like, oh. That's kind of weird, but all right, dude. What, were you cold? <laughs> Chilly in here, <laughs> Have you you guys are still fighting, right? Yeah, she's basically moved out. It's like a year now. August, since August, yeah. Almost wow. a year, six months. Over still over the same stuff using clothes and makeup and such. Um, now it's like escalated to new levels, I think. Now it's just like, you know, she's cursing at my mom and now she's coming she's disrespecting the whole household, which pisses me off. Mm. So She's out of control, right? She's out of control. Yes. You, think, you think uh she's partying? Oh, she is partying. On a two like she's going to clubs in the city, yeah. you know, with nice. grown men on a Tuesday. Oh. Grown men? Grown Jesus men. Christ. Yeah. She should be partying with children. <laughs> <laughs> Did she still go to church? Didn't she find God a little while ago? She I guess she, she lost him. Cause, uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's Jen, the church you can party at. Yeah, and also Jen told me that she suspected she was going just for the hookups. Yeah. Like she was just yeah. trying to meet guys at that church. <laughs> I'm just pointing this out. I didn't even realize this. Chris has my shoes on right now. Doesn't even bother me. I'm sitting here with my socking feet. so weird you didn't notice that. Doesn't bother me. What's the difference? Share and share like I always like to say. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> yeah, I think what it is, too, is my mom was an only child. So she kind of has like that selfish syndrome, and oh, yeah, always kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just the opposite of selfish. I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Well, My that's what happens when you ha you live in a house with a lot of siblings. You're mm -hmm. like, yeah, everybody uses stuff. Yeah. What are you gonna do? And I never did that gimmick of my house, my rules, or you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Also, here's the thing about me. I kind of can't believe I pulled this off for a lifetime. Never once, Chris, went into either of my children's room. Really. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm not even kidding. There would be times that I would either clean my room or redecorate my room and I would put something up and I would be like, Dad, come look. And he would literally stand in the hallway and go like this. Looks good. And then he would walk <laughs> by because he felt it was a private area. That's great. Yeah. Like, it's kind of how I treat like my my dog has a crate, which mm. I don't really close, but I treat it. I put a little blanket over her, like over the crate. And that's like her zone. So like sometimes when she's in a bad mood, like when she comes home from being in the rain, she's mad at me. She goes in there and I just respect that. That's yeah. her place. She needs you don't a little care whether her toys are a mess in there or <laughs> no, not? No, I don't. I don't. I don't mind but, how she keeps it in there. Sometimes I, all the I don't pillows see people are bunched like, up. Uh, oh, their room's a mess. What are your friends going to go in there? What do you fucking give a shit? <laughs> Their room's a mess. It doesn't matter. <laughs> People are like, what if they have a messy house when they're an adult? I'm like, when you're an adult, you make your fucking mind up whether you want a shit house or a fucking clean house. <laughs> <laughs> I also love this fucking house and that call me by your name. Beautiful. It, yeah. And not like expensive mansion that Jen would love. Like, oh my God, <laughs> they got the best stuff. Just a very livable, funky, 
house for artists. That sounds cool. Yeah. Mm. See, I know because I know that you enjoy that kind of stuff in a movie because you remember that's when I was watching Big Little Lies. I was in the first episode and I said, I don't know where the show's going to go or if you're going to like it, but I know you're going to be at least interested in watching all the houses because yeah. everyone has in, like interesting different kinds of yeah. expensive houses. And, that, and, and one of my favorite houses, the one that was just in the woods and it looked like it was a fucking half a tree in there. you know? Oh, yeah, that was um, Zoe Kravitz's house. Yeah. Like Zoe. That was my favorite, too. It was like very hippy dippy. Because I had and, news for you. I've been to Big Sur, and that surf is just so intense. I don't think I'd want to hear it twenty four hours. A it's day. mean, yeah, think, yeah. It, it is mean. After a while, you're like, did you just hear a seal hit a fucking rock? <laughs> 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 I think I just heard a killer whale just fucking go up on the beach. Uh, all right, Sean Spencer has just said he saw a bunch of fucking Russians in the White House, and he said they had guns. I guess that'll come out later. <laughs> when is uh, Trump speaking? Uh, is, uh, this evening. Is it this evening? Yeah, I don't uh, know. Exactly. Here's my thing. I'm not going to be watching this, because I like when he talks off the cuff, not when he reads. Yeah, I agree. He reads. It's not the real he him. He's as bored as we are. It's not the real him. They They write it up. They make him read it. I like when he's just like, he hears something out of nowhere. He's like, what? I like when he'll just say, Jay-Z, why don't you keep your mouth shut? That's why I wish that he would just tweet the State of the Union. That would be great. Because then you're going to get the real Trump, and then he's going to explain says, it in his bad. own. That's when it's always funny <laughs> yeah. to make too bad. Democrats are bad people who don't care about their country. Shame. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Sad is like my favorite. And now when anytime someone says it, I only think of him. Yeah. Like if I hear someone say, mm, Sad, I just think of Trump being like, Sad. I like when he says stuff like, Democrats are drunk drug addicts who want illegal immer- immigrants to rape their children. Sad. Because <laughs> it is sad. Uh, DJ Penn. DJ Penn, what's up, buddy? What's up, Ronnie? I'm like super stoked to see you tomorrow night at Caroline's. This is I'm driving out there now. Oh, well, you're going to get there early. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I got some other stuff to do, too, but I uh, just stopped and grabbed you a cigar. I hope you like my father. It's a good brand. Oh, I do like my father very much. Uh, I met the people from that company. I'm going to be very uh, happy to see you, DJ. That's tomorrow night. I'm going to be at Caroline's. <laughs> And uh, what time is that, Chris? 7.30 p.m. Carolines.com for tickets. Use the code DAN for a discount. What do you mean use the code DAN? What's like, that even mean? At checkout, they'll be like, discount code. You should type in D-A-N. Checkout of what? When, when you, you leave? When you buy the tickets on Carolines.com. Oh, you buy your tickets in advance online? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm a walk-up guy. If you walk up, can you just say DAN? I, I will <laughs> check with, on that. And uh, by the way, I know DAN. Do you think this would be uh, good if I say this is a joke? It's good to be in sweet Caroline's. Ba, ba, ba. Killing time on stage right now. So, so good. good. So good. So good. One more time, sweet Caroline. Is this his whole act? Your ties never been this good. Oh, oh. He's checking his watch. <laughs> Five more minutes, <laughs> then I'm done. <laughs> this is his fourth time singing Sweet Caroline. <laughs> then I bring Dan Bob on stage. On stage! On, on stage. stage! He'll have some jokes. <laughs> ba ba ba. <laughs> <laughs> this has been going on for 15 minutes. <laughs> and then later someone will be like, he was funny. Yeah, I liked he him. Good. <laughs> it is fine. The sun shines most of the time. Hey, everybody. Still doing uh, Neil Diamond. <laughs> Neil is retiring because uh, he can't tour anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. I had him on the show here one time. And uh, after the Boston Strong thing happened, mm-hmm. right? He felt bad about it. And, you know, this is what happens when you're a star for 50 years. He just, uh, like the next weekend or whatever, he just drives up to Boston and goes to the Red Sox game mm-hmm. and just walks up to the thing. Like, any, never called anybody and says, I'll, uh, I'll sing Sweet Caroline seven, uh, seventh inning. <laughs> and they're like, um, well, did, did you work this out with anyone? Uh, no. 
<laughs> just, but they sing it every time in seventh inning. So they came up. They didn't have earplugs for him, so it was all weird, and people were just like, "That's a New York guy, isn't it?" <laughs> it was very odd. <laughs> but this is what happens, you know? What yeah, I mean? you can do that. I <laughs> guess you could do it. It doesn't always work out well, though, because you should call ahead. <laughs> Let him promote it a little bit. Tomorrow is State of the Union. Oh, I thought it was tonight. Yeah. And I got this from a guy who said, when I used to co-host with you, we always knew the right night for State of the Union. Oh, shit. Mm. Mm. I'll hold a grudge. He saw, um, what is this for? What do you talk about ring no not right now chris <laughs> right now i don't even have any water so while you're thinking about ring i'm part <laughs> becky let's get some water in here she doesn't know where it is yet maybe oh, Vito, maybe Vito could take her Vito, escort becky to where we get water Scort her it's a scort scort did you just say scort scort you'd say escort all right escort have some extra water if you'd like. It has a little lipstick on stain on the top. I like Becky. She's uh, a little long in the tooth, but taking a run in all the world. <laughs> <laughs> the hell with it. She's not going to be a cashier at the Acme anymore. <laughs> or Acme, as they say in Philadelphia. They do. I don't know where they get that extra vowel. Uh, do any of you guys have Alexa? I do not have Alexa, but I'm it. thinking about it. Jen, when you go home tonight, say to Alexa, Alexa, who will win the Super Bowl? Because okay. Alexa makes a pick. Oh, no, really? really? Yeah. Did you try it? Yeah. Well, because uh, me and your brother were just fucking around last night asking Alexa a bunch <laughs> of stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> me and my mom have done that, too. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> He got Alexa to uh, remind me on her birthday in November <laughs> that it's, it's her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and be, he was funny because he talks to Alexa like it's a person. He'll be like, Alexa, blah, blah, blah. And he'll be like, you're out of your mind. This, and he just starts to talk to it <laughs> like it's a friend. He's ready for the AI takeover. Oh, the AI is here. Hey, I love hey, it. I loved it. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. Hey, Randy in Philly. What's up, Ronnie B? Yeah. What you got planned for the Eagles? Dude, I really want to keep it as low key as humanly possible. You kidding me? No. There's a party at, uh, that they're having at the cellar. Jay's begging me to go. And I'm like, I don't see how I can do that, Jay. Because the person putting on the fucking show is from Boston and is a known Boston fan. And he's a ball buster, Mr. Robert Bobby Kelly. Yeah, that would be difficult to be around somebody. Jen, you going to that party? I want to. I I probably am, because I'll be in the city for my, it's my birthday weekend. Aww. Oh, so. you with your sister? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going with my you friend. You belong <laughs> in the city. <laughs> that might have been on the Miami Vice soundtrack. I forget, your birthday is always Super Bowl Sunday. It was yeah, last year, fun. too. Yeah, it's a good time, because it's Grammys and now Super Bowl weekend. Yeah, you're overshadowed. <laughs> <laughs> It's like having a Christmas birthday. Yeah. You're going to have a birthday at Caroline's tomorrow night? Um, probably, possibly. Mm -hmm. I think, I know they're going to have Philly food there and all. Ooh. But, you know, I got to worry about my own pop and stuff like that. I know. Not to mention just like, you got to take care of your own self, your yeah, nerves, up to your me. feelings. I, it was up to me. I like to just watch the game by myself, sadly. Because I don't want to see people. What about me? No, I don't like to have you around because... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say this: You're very snacky during the game. I I do like snacks during the game. I like to keep the snacks coming, and I like them crunchy and loud. 
Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Becky, do a lot of people say this to you? Shut up, Becky. <laughs> Shut up, Becky. More, oh, my God, Becky. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot left. that yeah. one. Shut up, Becky is from uh, Simpsons. I believe Becky was played by Parker Posey. You're fucking kidding yeah. me. You're right. Now that you say it, it comes back and it cuts like a knife. <laughs> God, I didn't know it was going to hurt Well, it either. cuts like a knife. <laughs> I act like Neil Diamond wrote that song. Chris, where are you watching the game at? Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, okay. Brooklyn. I already asked you once. Boring. Yeah, what about you? Your house. Don't even start you. because I got to, you know what I mean? I got my dad to worry about. I don't like that. Have... Guess home then. Yeah, stay at home. Away from me. I don't want you to see me cry. Look, that I thought maybe we could cry together. Strong men cry. Remember that when that's from Chris? Strong men cry too. Oh, he doesn't fucking remember. You act like you're oh. into the dude bro comedy of all time, but only Vito is. Mm-hmm. That's his. That's his favorite. No, uh, uh, Lebowski, Big Lebowski. I don't, <laughs> the old man of Big Lebowski might be my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> so great. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Sean, what's up, buddy? Hey, Ronnie B. Yeah. A uh, couple of months ago, y'all was watching a viral video of a cheerleader doing a walkover over of an invisible box. Yeah. And over the weekend, I think Gail and Aunt mentioned of a Twitter video of a guy who's taking it to the next level. I was wondering if she had a chance to look at it yet. I did not see it. You had a very busy uh, weekend, I know, Gail. I did, yeah. I was uh, was busy this weekend. So this is a video that you tweeted to me. All right, I'm going to take a look at it. Do you got it, Chris? Not yet. Uh, Well, just tell us what it is, Sean, while we're looking it up. It's a guy, and it looks like he's in an office space, and he does the same trick. But he does it like two steps instead of just the one. And I've still not figured out how he done it. I saw Leonard Skinner and they did give me three steps. <laughs> so this whole <laughs> fucking thing has come together uh, in a way that I never imagined. So a guy has upped the game, up the game of the box step. I'm searching Finally. for it, but I'm not finding it. But I'm searching. Well, would you like me to talk about Ring? I would we're like. Looking for it because I would like. If I had, if somebody did this box step on my front porch, mm-hmm. I'd be able to see it because I have Ring, and Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer. Today, over a million people use the amazing Ring video doorbell to help protect their homes. Ring knows home security begins at the front door, but it doesn't end there. Now, I have some friends that were telling me this, and I don't believe I've never thought of it before. Their parents are elderly. Mm -hmm. They can keep an eye on their parents' front door from their house. That's so smart. That's perfect. And now they're extending that same level of security to the rest of your home with the Ring floodlight cam just like rings amazing doorbell floodlight cam is a motion activated camera and floodlight that connects right to your phone with hd video and two-way audio that lets you know the moment anyone steps on your property see and speak to visitors even set off an alarm right from your phone with rings floodlight cam when things go bump in the night You'll immediately know what it is. Whether you're home or away, the Ring Floodlight Cam lets you keep an eye on your home from anywhere. Ring Floodlight offers the ultimate in home security with high visibility floodlights and a powerful HD camera that puts security in your hands. With Rings, with Ring, you're always home. Save up to $150 off of a Ring security kit when you go to ring.com slash comedy. Ring.com slash comedy. That's ring.com slash comedy. In show, the only father-daughter radio show in the history of the planet Earth. There have been 17 mother-son shows. That's which is weird. weird. Yeah, yeah, that is I weird. I didn't expect that. 17. Uh, Vita, why don't you ever play any of the fun production that's been done for us? The fun songs, the bits, the excitement. You know that Friday is big game day. 
Uh, we're not running any promos about how we're going to give away a football that Tris just got signed for us this week by T.O., a guy who may be going into the Hall of Fame this weekend. Yeah. Who are the people that are up for Hall of Fame, Chris? And then we'll all decide whether that person belongs in the Hall of Fame okay. or not. Um, now, football, I always believe it's easier to get in than it is in baseball. Mm-hmm. In football, you pretty much have to be a quarterback, and they will put you into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Norm Sneed is in the Hall Johnny Manziel is going in this year. As little what? as he's played. Yeah, <laughs> Johnny Manziel going in this year. Roman Gabriel is in twice. One as a quarterback, and another is just an all-around nice guy. <laughs> His mom used to always have fruit slices for everybody. <laughs> All right, these are the names. Uh, Terrell Owens. T.O., okay. Yes. Tony Baselli. Mm. Uh, Alan, uh, Alan uh, Phoenicia. Brian Dawkins. Yeah, I'll put him in. Ty Law. Joe, Joe Jacoby. I don't know, uh, John Lynch I would love to see in the Hall of Fame. John Lynch played with the Bucks, and he's the guy turning the 49ers around, just turning them around. But uh, who uh, the Bucks had that great defense, and as the years go by, people are becoming more and more appreciative yeah. of that defense. Because yeah. we call teams good defenses now when they give up twenty eight fucking points. Yeah, the Jaguars gave up a ton of points in both games. Yeah, do you know what the average was the championship year for the Bucks that they gave away? No, how many points they gave away? Just take a guess. All right, uh, twenty two points. Two point seven points. Oh my god, a game. 2.7. Holy shit. The number of uh, uh, average yards gained on the ground against them was minus 17. <laughs> it was unbelievable. The Tampa 2, we used to call it for the Tampa 2 defense. <laughs> and, now, and now Vito's going like this. I think the Browns have a good defense. I go, Vito, they didn't even win a fucking game this year. <laughs> so when did they do that? Saturday? Oh, that's and then, Saturday. They, then they walk everybody out during the Super Bowl. Yeah. Who's doing the pregame singing at the at the big game? And is there going to be a salute to Tom Petty? I, I think there so. should be a salute to Tom Petty. You know, a I... lot of a lot of places are playing. I won't back down. And then they play the waiting is the hardest part. Yeah. And uh, doing uh, the refs looking stuff over, and everybody sings along with that. So he's getting plenty out there. Nothing for Prince. Uh, we've got the Brill Building lined up. Uh, Chris came to me and goes, should we do Minnesota because it's the big game weekend that we're playing that? You checked in. Did you hear back yet? I haven't heard back yet. Should you check with Don? I'll check with Don next break. Why do I have to tell you, Chris? I thought I'd get on the phone after the show. After the show is too late, isn't it? Vito, do you think after the show is too late? I think that's far too late. Okay, I'm going by his expertise. <laughs> Listen to Vito for me. Listen to me. I don't know. Just listen to Vito. I'm listening to Becky too, the brand new intern. Yeah, she's moving up fast. Yeah, Pink is, is singing the national anthem. Oh yeah, that's right. Pink. And then the cast Pink of Hamilton. Pink is my favorite color. The cast of Hamilton. Oh no, this is fucking last year's. Hey Vito, do not crack a mic until you're 100 percent sure what you have. Let Becky check your work before you come in. <laughs> It's because the people could be sitting around going, I can't wait to see the fucking cast of Hamilton. I know. And then they see Pink fucking show up and they're telling their friends, Pink's uh, in the cast of Hamilton. And then they're going to say, what year is this? Zero? Is this year zero, the year Christ was born? (laughs) When Christ was born. Yeah, the big fucking game. <laughs> oh, please, everyone, everyone send me more wonderful things Why it's the Patriots, the, all the fucking stars of line for the Patriots. I already know it. I don't need to hear that the Patriots are the favorites. I get it. They're the new England Patriots, not the old England Patriots. There's it's- not a thing that isn't going their way. No thing. Isn't Tiki Barber also up? No. For the, I thought that he I don't was. think he's retired long enough. No. He hasn't been out yet. Tiki could oh. go in as well. I mean, not Tiki, Rod Day. I, I was confused. Oh. Tiki will never go in. Never. No, he fucking retired. 
early. He walked away healthy. He yeah. can't fucking walk away healthy and expect to get a goddamn gold ribbon. Now, Rod Day. Rod Day. Rod Day. Rod Day. Rod Day. Rod Day. Okay, why? It's I couldn't name. remember his name. <laughs> Hey, that isn't my name. I'm not Rondé. <laughs> That's your full name, isn't it? No. Oh, my God. It's, it's a fucking a... crazy name. <laughs> I thought you were Rondé. My, but... my full name is Ronaldo, uh, <laughs> and I was born in the eastern part of Havana. That was that little girl last night. I forget her name. Uh, Jet will know. Who's the little Cuban girl that everybody likes right now? Ariana Grande? No. Dude, Grande? what fucking year do you think it is? <laughs> do you think Hamilton is... What are you doing screaming and waving her? Just relax, Vito. Just relax. Come on, Becky's in there now. It was uh, Camila, Camila Cabello. Yeah. Did you hear her <laughs> say she's from East Havana? You're like, what? She, yeah, I think she, she's from Cuba and Mexico. She's yeah, Cuba she Mexico. said she's the immigrant child of yeah. Cuban and Mexicans. What's but wrong she, with West Havana? <laughs> the, well, that's where the fucking idiots live. <laughs> she ain't down with those assholes. <laughs> Um, and she was so serious last night, she wore a little glasses. <laughs> I only know her from Saturday Night Live. I don't know anything else about her. She was on. She was in the group Fifth Harmony, mm. and then it was like a big thing because she just left the group, and then they performed the, for the first time, I think the VMAs, without her, and then they just like, they all came out as five, and then one dropped out, and it was supposed to symbolize like her dropping from the group. It was It was like a shady thing for them to do. Why? Because she, Beyonce guess, got out of her fucking <laughs> shitty band. She ditched those assholes. Because <laughs> she went on a solo career, and I guess it ended pretty... Like, she just up and left them, and they were pretty bitter about it. Really? Tell her to check into Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> or Miss Diana Ross. It works sometimes. She made the right move. No one's heard of Fifth Harmony. <laughs> I gotta admit, I, didn't, I never heard of him. I've never heard of him, but... I just I heard the name and then I went. Oh, that's probably not something yeah. <laughs> something I would like. <laughs> I mean, really, even one harmony is too much for me. Dave, what's up? Hey, I remember those Tampa Bay teams with uh, I think it was Leroy Selman. Sure. But do you remember when Jesse Ventura used to do the caller on the radio for the game? Yeah, I never heard him once because I don't sit around listening to the radio during a fucking game. I watch television. <laughs> but I do remember when he had that gig. And I was like, this is odd. And then later he became a governor. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you thought that was weird. <laughs> Jesse Ventura was like the original Trump. Like, no oh one yeah. saw that then, shit coming. And then sometimes when the game would, well, they'd always get out of hand. You know, they'd always get behind 30 points or something. And then, then Jesse would go, this game's academic. Let's get out of here now and get a seat up Bennington's why it's early. <laughs> I don't know what. All right. Uh, all right, it is the uh, Bennington Show. Hard Rock Johnny is calling right now on the uh, hotline. Um, does uh, Becky know all about uh, Hard Rock Johnny? Give it a lowdown. Okay, good. Lowdown? What do you think it, he said? He exactly. gave it the dirty lowdown. <laughs> Becky's coming around. <laughs> oh, ow. I'm not going to play lowdown for us. It's one of the greatest songs of all time. Uh, I'll tell you this about Johnny. Um, he does have a lot of rock paraphernalia. Hey, Johnny. Bennington's. Hey, what's up, buddy? I just want to know who Alan Seneca is that's going to go into the Hall of Fame, Chris. I always thought it was Alan Seneca. I don't know. Why do you got to point out every fucking mistake this Come idiot on. makes? Come on. It's just, I mispronounced the name. What's the big deal? It's I a big curious. deal. It's important because Alan Seneca never played football. <laughs> uh, last night, uh, the uh, girl brought out Elton John and said, along with his partner, Bernie Topan. And I'm like, this guy's been writing fucking number one hits. I know. For 50 years. And the girl from uh, fucking Cup Song doesn't know who the fuck he is. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Cup Song. Um, Cuppy Annie Wilson, Kendrick? I think. Anna Kendrick. Yeah, Anna Kendrick. Cuppy. Yeah, that's Cuppy. one confident kid, though. Uh-huh. She is. She's like, because I'm tiny dancer because I'm tiny. Like, you know, guys? And I'm like, I don't know anything don't know. about. I'm here. a spinner. <laughs> <laughs> you just pick me on your, put me on your cock, grab me by my big toes and spin me. 
She's very confident. Totally. Do, do you ever see the uh, movie that she did called uh, with uh, Sam Rockwell called like Mr. Right? No, I never saw that. She basically does a Sam Rockwell impression with him throughout the show. Really? Yeah. Terrible movie. I can't movie, really imagine yet, her. I've never turned it off. <laughs> no, she's she's good. She's a good actor. She's confident. She's like a little Vince Vaughn. <laughs> she's like the tiniest Vince Vaughn we've ever had in our lives. Whatever happened to regular size Vince Vaughn? Big Vince Vaughn. Seems like he's had a fall from grace like no one else. I think the last movie he did was like The Intern. That was like three, four years ago. No, he did that prison movie out this year that nobody saw. Oh, yeah, I didn't even know about it. Was, I think it was called A Party at the Big House or something. I don't know. But he was a big major star. A big major star. <laughs> it's always weird when big major stars disappear. Yeah. And that was like massive, like giant summer comedy hit yeah. after another. Yeah. And then not so much anymore. Well, also the Wedding Crashers uh, fucking partner, Owen, uh, the Butterscotch uh, Stallion. <laughs> How come we never see him anymore? Wow. 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 What? <laughs> Chris, oh, Chris is how come you're not playing Dirty Low Down for fucking... That was the whole thing you were supposed to do for 10 minutes. All right, Johnny. Great theme song, man. Best of luck to you. I like it. Finally I had one. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Yeah. Hey, John. You're on the Bennington Show, John in Milwaukee. How you guys doing? Hey, I want to join uh, Hard Rock Johnny here in bogging on Chris at all the mistakes he makes in a really? given day. Really? And that is the Vince Vaughn movie is not the intern. That is a Robert De Niro movie. You're right. The internship is what Vince Vaughn was in. All right. Oh, come on. Two things are going to happen right now. Number one, I'm going to send you into the pretty good prize closet. Ooh, number one's good. And two, I am going to the bullpen. Oh, come on. Vito, come on in. I got to pull you in. This is bullshit. Oh, give, me the, no. give me the mic, Chris. <laughs> give me the mic. This is bullshit. You're, you're going to be able to go another day. Don't show me up in front of a home crowd. Let's go. Today isn't your day. You got fucking shelled. Intern internship. Yes, that's a big fucking difference in this business. It's the same concept. It is not. Who's that my, guy that's so happy? Take my pet papers. What are pet papers? He's making his third fucking mistake. <laughs> Vito, congratulations. You're Great in job, show. Vito. Looking good with the hat hair combo. Vito, probably not going to take you to the end of the game, but just give me the next half hour. Okay, the <laughs> Next half hour, and I bring Becky in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you ever notice that since Becky got here, Jen doesn't seem like such a big deal. Yeah, I know. It's like, Jen, old news. There's a new kid in town, and it's not Jen. There's a new kid. What's it? Is like a fire hat that you're wearing in here today? It's a it's a Nick's like Nick's FDNY hat. I find that really uh, bad. Did they think, like they just took their logo? They did like an FDN an FDNY night at the garden. Yeah, but you're not a fucking first responder. It's not right that you wear the hat. People might think you are. And he's not a Knicks fan what either. What are you doing? Oh There's my no God. What, you, what don't you understand about being pulled out? That terrified me. Of I course, mean, we know you're a Knicks fan. You know, I, I usually keep game. my back. I know to... you do. That's his fucking fourth mistake in a fucking five minute. <laughs> suck him, I had to fucking yank him. What's this, uh, Vito, your big story? What's this Kendall Shenner, who I don't even know who that is, talk some shit with a little fucking pussy way of putting shit <laughs> on. And Sophia Ritchie. What's that even mean? So Kendall uh, Jenner commented. Why does it say Renner? Or Shender? It says Kendall Shender on this list. I, what the hell is going on? That's me. I I, uh... Uh, I don't need all your fucking mistakes, Chris. <laughs> that's six mistakes. Shit. Go ahead. Did you send that in as Kendall Shender? I believe I might have sent it in as Kendall Shender. <laughs> oh, he did. You know what? <laughs> what? With a fucking big game like this scheduled? Yeah. I want you to just take the rest of the week off. Oh, no, I got to come in. No, no. you're going to throw everything off. Look at how much you're Call up the him. fucking homeless shelter. Say anybody that they bring in is fine with me. I gave you your 20 back, right? Yes. Because I want to let it ride. Yeah. Let's say one day you fucking do okay. Just okay. Not even good. <laughs> Something to aim for. What were you telling me about 
Kendall Shendar. Right, so Ken, Kendall Shender <laughs> was uh, commenting. Fucking idiot, man. Come on, that went up that way, too. She commented on a photo. Uh, Take a second to yeah. fucking read. Scott Disick and Sophia Ritchie, his 19-year-old oh. girlfriend, he commented Wait, on... Wait, she's only 19? I thought she was 20. No, she's 19. Oh, she's a baby. He commented on oh, her... Oh, this is the big famous model, right? Yeah. Uh, this is the yeah. This is the the non sex bot looking one. So she commented. You're out of your mind. She commented on um, the picture of Scott and Sophia Richie saying, "Look at Scott and his children." <laughs> that's a good joke. Yeah, that's funny. But why you got to attack her and say she's not sexy? She's no, no, a no, fucking. No, no. I mean, like Kyle Kylie Jenner actually looks like one of those sex dolls. Well, when did we start body shaming people, Vito? I don't know. He's All right. This it's isn't some. You will we say this. Chris, yes. he learned that You're from you. I did learn that. <laughs> I learned that from him. He's he, pulled. Don't he point at him. Don't point at somebody. I who's... actually just wish we had a curtain. I nice. wish we had showers that he would be showering. <laughs> <laughs> then I could still go to the showers <laughs> when I pull him. I mean, everything went, was going bad today, but Shendel? <laughs> Shender. <laughs> Kendall Shender. But yeah, mm. there, there's some beef What a there. shit show. There's some beef No, there. she's right. I mean, it's a funny joke. <laughs> it's a I actually funny didn't know she was joke. so witty. I mean, after that Pepsi thing was funny, I guess. That was a great commercial. <laughs> it actually got me more into, you know, the whole, yeah. the whole fucking Me Too thing or whatever. We he became playing. very political after that. Mm. I like this last night. Sirius uh, XM Zone, uh, Jenny McCarthy showed up and the internet blew up for this because she had blue hair. Yeah, now, isn't it funny that you can dye your hair so many different things? Um, but nothing drives people crazier than blue hair. Blue hair, really. Blue and green. And I it's feel. not permanent. No, she's she's gonna be back to the old Jenny soon. Yeah, she but, looks I mean, really she, good. She with this blue hair. The weird thing is, like, she often is either blonde, but she does pink a lot. Really? Yeah, she does pink hair all the time. She's had pink hair like since she's worked here. And then they're going blue, and it's like, well, we know she's she has it in her. And her husband is the one who shot uh, Bruce Willis, <laughs> and we didn't know it at the time. Killed him. <laughs> I didn't find out to the end of the show that this motherfucker was a murderer. <laughs> I think it was a murder suicide, right? <laughs> um. Uh, but the reason that she she Chris, said would that you take care of John from Milwaukee? He's just sitting there. You have to be thrown out of that room. I don't know where to put you in shade 45 now. I'm at the point, Chris. I don't know where the fuck to put you. Is he screaming yes. at Becky? Screaming. I don't know why. <laughs> um. <laughs> Give me my money, prizes. He is, uh. Oh, did you dump that? I was about to do a bit. Oh, shit. Where can I fucking put you? The right field isn't <laughs> deep enough for you, is it? <laughs> yeah. Is this a turf? Yeah, well, in uh, what, what happened in Little League, you put the stink hit in right field because everybody pulls it. Oh, but I never heard the term right field isn't deep enough. I just made it up That's this so second. That's so funny. Were you just yelling at Jen, Jen a second ago? I was not yelling at Jen. Mm -hmm. To ask Jen to come over. And tell the truth. She defends him a lot, so you never know. She tries. By the to way, that was the radio shark, and then Chris dumped out on him. Jen, without, you got to tell the truth. Be right serious. Now. Was Chris yelling at you or Becky? It wasn't a yell. What was he doing? What was he doing? Doing an impression. Just a, <laughs> just a little reprimand. <laughs> She's like an abuse victim in I there. I, I literally know. saw him yelling and going like this. And I'm like, we have a girl who's literally worked for us for two hours. <laughs> and he's acting like a nut. All right. Can I tell you something, Chris? I hate abuse. I'm going to nail your fucking head with a mallet. <laughs> Please don't do That's that. That's what he does to abusers. Yeah. <laughs> and me too. Because the um, right field thing. <laughs> right field isn't deep enough for you, for you is it? I can't send them anywhere today that the ball won't find them. That's my fucking problem. <laughs> the best is you sent him in there and he he didn't even wait 10 seconds to crack the mic when he was in. And with another fucking mistake, he's just mistake filled. 
<laughs> God bless him. I love him. Thanks. You know, he's like my own. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you right now, your chick has fucked you up. I think that's that's all you care about. Do you think you should break up with her for your job? <laughs> <laughs> Breaking up with her. If we were in a band, yeah. we would all be telling you you need to break up. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh-huh. And she's not coming on the road with us. No way. There's she's not doing costumes for us. Van, how bad do you think our fucking band is? <laughs> if I was in a van and I wasn't in junior high school, I'd quit the band. <laughs> Big J was telling me how he's in the bit of Peter Cetera. Really? <laughs> Even the guys in Chicago went, oh, this is too pussy. Even for us. And we're definitely pussies. <laughs> I've been waiting all day for that. <laughs> You've been waiting all day for Sunday night. <laughs> Chris, what about this? How would you like to become PD of this channel? I like being on this show. Oh, fuck. I enjoy it very much. Right now, Becky could replace show. <laughs> Shit. I would prefer it. Yeah. I can't believe she had to hear verbal abuse this early. I know. And by the way, you know who her friend is that she brought it up? Who? Oh. How do you not know anything about our interns? It's Lewis. Lewis from uh, previously of uh, the O&A show. Now, Jim and Sam. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he's bonfire now. Wow, he moves yeah, around. I said where he was. I said previously. Oh. Yeah, nobody wants him. <laughs> <laughs> they pushed him out the bonfire. <laughs> So that's how you're acting. I feel like it wasn't tough like- acting, tough acting, ten acting. That show. <laughs> that's what they call me. Who's they? Everybody. I'm around the one the who town. said it. Now you're giving it fucking. You're giving the credit away. You're right. That was a mistake. You can't of my stand part. for a second for me to have a bit of fucking credit, can you, Chris? I just wanted to let, let you know that it's cut on. Dude, what are you doing? You're in that room. You should just be listening to my abuse, not answering it back. <laughs> Like what Vito's in here, we hear him, what, once or twice a show? If, and even that, he goes like this. I wouldn't give up a billion dollars to be with my mom. <laughs> my mommy are best friends. And if that seems weird to you guys, then that's okay by me. She's a cool lady. I know. It's How would you know what fucking cool is? You wouldn't know what cool is if you licked a fucking freezer. You'd still be confused. <laughs> Crack the mic to laugh at Vito. That's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Cracking the mic to, uh, to laugh is the most embarrassing. What do you mean, see? I fucking am looking at him. He's an abusive person. Yeah. Well, who started the fucking thing? He and Gail said that he was abusive. Yeah. yeah we don't I'm even actually the one who caught him. Because he always pushes to the side, so he's out of view for Ron, but I can always catch him screaming at whoever's in that room. It he's a strange. tough guy. When he's, uh, oh, yeah. he's like one of those types. I was just being stern in here. Stern. You do anything but teach. That's you. you I was teach. teaching. I was teaching. That isn't teaching, screaming the first day someone's here. You should be screaming into a mirror. Why don't you want to be slapping your face with a fucking football spike? Ah, what is wrong with you? <laughs> But gender. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot gender was the reason. <laughs> gender Jenner. It's not yeah, even what you put. Gender. <laughs> it's oh, even worse. You don't even know your own fuck up. Fuck up. <laughs> Can I tell you my favorite viral piece of the weekend? Yeah, please do. The is a new replacement for Pizza Rat. Which is actually it's funnier, and I will say, and I know this might be controversial, but I'm going to say adorable. I don't know, because I know a lot of people, when they see a rat, find it gross. Can I tell you? I don't find a rat so gross, but a, a rat acting like a human in the shower <laughs> is disturbing. This, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. This is like a cartoon. Pixar. Come oh. to life. Now there it's he is. It's itself. And he's... Get some how do they know wash? how to do that? <laughs> I like to know that rats are clean. That is so cute. I can't stand it. Look at his little feet. I'm fucking freaked out. And I, did, I begged that this was CGI. <laughs> Please go over to the iBang 
and take a look at this. Uh, Pizza Rat takes a shower like a human. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it is standing up in a sink. <laughs> and scrubbing itself down. And the way he like leans Look over. Look at the <laughs> ass. <laughs> oh my God, is that cute? No. I mean, that's one of the cutest things I've ever seen in my life. I'm disturbed by it. I'm disturbed in a way that. Oh, listen to the noises it makes. I'll kill it. Don't say what? that. I don't like that. It's got hair all, all over its body, but it's still like it's pushing its hair back. Like. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, like, like specifically yeah. conditioning the hair. <laughs> it looks like he's shaving yeah. there. He just did under the pits, which I didn't even think that they would think. That's one of the main spots you got to get. Yeah, look at it. He's really focusing on the pits. Now, is there something weird? Like, like could you imagine then that this rat it probably does a better ch- job at bathing than Chris did? Well, <laughs> First of all, no this way. rat owns so- uh, soap. There's no way fucking Chris goes in and buys soap. There's not a way. There's dish soap he somewhere around the apartment. He might steal soft soap from fucking work, puts it in his pocket, walks out the door. That's where I get my toilet paper. Oh, I hate Now, I, just, I saw one of the comments, and someone was like, please, whoever did this, never put soap on your mouth. I'm like, I think he's fine. I think he's going to be fine. They Wait, live what are they acting like soap is They're like, it's, like it's going to kill him. But look, he seems like he knows what he's look, doing. Look, you can't he's do anything with a fucking animal without, without them acting like it's bad. I know. And th- no one did this to the rat. This fucking rat somehow got into some soap and just started scrubbing <laughs> up. It's fucking freaky. He wants to do this. I mean, he's happy to be cleaning up. You think this rat's evolved or is this just a fluke? Because if they're no. evolving, we got a problem. <laughs> what problem? First of all, evolve. This looks like you before your big fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't consider you evolve. No, these th- this is happening all over the world at the same time. This has been reported by scientists that rats are suddenly no fucking shower. <laughs> what the fuck? No, I know. We got to stop. Now, this, here's the man. thing to remind you because you're saying evolve, Chris. Yeah. The rats got to space before us. They shot a fucking rat in space before a human. First fucking mammal into space. Rat. So, who's running things on this fucking planet? It's a fucking rat planet. And then there, two days later, there was just a note left there next to the, the, the little rat shower that said, so long and thanks for all the cheese. <laughs> what book, Vito? So uh, long? Letters for Algonon. Oh my god. So what? I just I knew that was about mice, so I thought that was it. It isn't about mice, you fucking lunatic. So long and all the it was the term was so long and all the so long and thanks for all the fish. Does that help? Old man in the sea. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's a better guess though. He's yeah. like fish related. Yeah. Disgusting. Moby Dick. Yes, that's what a whale said. <laughs> Just before Moby swam away. If anything, you called that Moby's dick. <laughs> and that was a fucking hip hop porn <laughs> that you were into. God, that's Ooh. cute. I really find it cute. Uh, I'm disturbed by it. Um, I'm, I'm the not only person kidding. who finds it cute. It is. I'm, look, on one level, it's adorable. And then I remember that it's a fucking rat. And I'm disturbed. I'm very fucking disturbed. <laughs> I didn't even like pizza rat taking fucking pizza down the steps. <laughs> you know, what's going on with your dating life? Has it happened yet? I think we're going on a date net this week or next week. With really? Because that that's no. against every rule we uh, have. You better not. I met a girl at a bar this weekend. Dancer. Did he dance her? No, just like mm. a, she's She's been on ESPN ballroom dancing. Let's take a look at her. I don't have any pictures because we met in person, but I will try to find her Instagram. Where'd you meet her at? I met her at the at the Johnny Utah's. So she's a ballroom dancer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Big you B-D. can Google the name. I feel like you can. I don't have the full name. I just have the first name. Then why are you so sure you're going on a date? Well, she she asked her my number, and then when I walked away for a second, Fuck, she grabbed that. she grabbed my friend while I walked away. Oh, I'm glad you said friend. 
She grabbed my friend. <laughs> she grabbed my friend when I walked away. That's what he calls him. his penis. His friend. <laughs> my friend. Asked him if I was single. She asked, asked her penis that. Look, you don't even have to ask. Just know by looking at him that he's single. <laughs> so, uh, uh, now, do you ballroom dance? No, I don't ballroom dance. Let's immediately get you fucking dance lessons. I was hoping maybe she could teach me how to dance. Well, no, yes, that's the worst thing you okay. want to do, dude. Okay. And I think that if she did want to, you could pretend like that was your first time. But look, then you'll have like a little bit of knowledge yeah. about it. You don't want to be a total idiot. Now, luckily, you are in a city that has a late night ballroom dance scene that most people don't know about. A late night tango scene mm-hmm. that most people don't lo- know, uh, know about. And they said that the hottest dance today and they say kids are coming out of the womb just <laughs> doing a twist yeah they're doing a funny twist <laughs> their little elbows are gone so here's what i'm saying you know <laughs> i'm gonna give you go to deborah the entire bank she's a world famous uh tango dancer and is fa- and friends with world famous tango dance come in with the tango perhaps the most romantic mm. Of all cha 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 dances. After that, I'd like to see. Do not ask her to fucking teach you to dance. Okay, I gotta go yeah. in, fucking dance strong. You don't want to say like, you no, don't want to like oh, like bathroom. you don't want to have to overshow, yeah. but you want to like have a little base, a little knowledge of what her passion is. Now, I also heard this before about the tango, and I heard this from uh, a famous uh, person because you see uh, tango dancers. I mean, the skill set is amazing, right? Yeah. But it's kind of like, you know, if you're like, oh, I saw a fucking race car driver, so I'll never be able to drive. You know what I mean? You can't pay attention on that level. They say some of the biggest tango dancers in Argentina are big guys because the girls like to have something big to swing around on it because a lot of that stuff is the girls twirling around the dude you just gotta you just gotta know when to be there when to bend when to move right but they like a big base yeah they like a big base you're a big base i'm a a huge base i'm excited for this now she i mean it was a nice conversation to start the night you know hung out for a few hours at the bar looking forward to the date i don't know what to do yet though because i know lobster date didn't work out too well last night i don't use a jinx date two years ago why are you looking backwards um that's like i oh if I left my house, I get hit by a fucking truck. I better not leave my house anymore. <laughs> you know what? That fucking lobster date of yours smelled like fucking lobster. <laughs> Mike, what's up? Hey, Ronnie B. How's it going? Good. Um, I think you're going to have to pull Vito because uh, it's flowers for Algernon, not letters for Algernon. You know what? Here. I'm going to send you in a pretty good prize closet. Not only did Vito miss it, but... Fucking bullfriend, fucking uh, Billy over there, Mister Two. Uh, Victor, what's up? Hey, Ron and Bennington. Yeah, the, uh, you're referring to uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Pretty good prize closet, my friend. This is just costing me out the ass today because Vito and Chris are not in the game. All right, you only like talking about your personal life, so let's go into this. You're gonna take some dance lessons. Yep. You already got your new suit, right? You said you got like a lady suit for yourself. I have that Liz Claiborne piece. <laughs> ah. Piece. <laughs> I should have to go get it tailored. I'll go get it tailored this week. Yeah, tell them to take out a little in the thigh. <laughs> I saw you come in with it, and that's where you, the, you only wore that one time, and that's where you met Becky, right? Yeah, I wore that once. I wore it to I wore it to two weddings. That's the only times I've worn that suit. No funerals. No, no funerals. Save it for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Why she look nice? How does everybody think Chris is going to uh, die? Gail? Asphyxiation, maybe? Asphyxiation. And how would that happen? Buried alive or <laughs> hanging himself? Uh, I was just thinking uh, in his sleep after a oh, heavy just, night of yeah. drinking. Yeah. Um, Jen, how do you see Chris dying? Um, I, I hate saying it, but I think a heart attack. <laughs> mm. Don't hate saying it. <laughs> yeah, it's just true. Safe bet, Jen. <laughs> Yeah. Suicide. 
Suicide. <laughs> suicide. <laughs> Dear God. Now, is it going to be alone suicide where no one finds the body for a while? Or is he going to do it in public, like hang himself from, <laughs> in Times Square? From the ball in Times Square, he's just fucking swinging up there. His girlfriend just left him, and he's alone in a Oh, studio God, apartment. this is mm. turning really dark. Specific. It's not a studio. He's got a one-bedroom. Oh, yeah, that's right, dude. It does have a door. All right, and I'm going to just uh, honestly say this, and also it's too easy. Choking on ice. <laughs> <laughs> Now, here's the weird thing, though. At a hockey game. <laughs> He'll be down sucking on the ice. How do you think you're going to die, Chris? For a while, I thought suicide. I really thought I'd just, I'd just throw myself in front of a train car one day. But I'm thinking it has to be something like health-related. I don't think I'm actually going to take my own life. But no one's going with old age. No. No, 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 no. Um, I basically had this same question. Uh, conversation with my dad the other day his next birthday is telling me he's going to be 91 he's like it was i'm really interested to see how far i can push this <laughs> i think and, we all are yeah. which is our own self i go i know him. i was actually saying to him and we we're just talking like a couple of fellas i go i gotta tell you i'm blown away <laughs> i go i don't know anybody my age with a dad and i get a sister 11 years older than me i know it's really shocking and her she's got both her parents <laughs> That's hard to believe. <laughs> Look at Vito didn't have I know. a dad at what, 10? Four. <laughs> Four. What a fuck up. Yeah, really. I hope you call Pop and say that. You should get your Vito stats. <laughs> uh, Bill in California. Bill. Hey, Ronnie. Pepper's going to die by drowning in a, about a three foot pool of water trying to save a little kid. <laughs> um, I was with you up until trying to save a little kid. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe blow a little kid, but never save one. Not interested, Ron. <laughs> trying to blow a kid in the kiddie pool. He passed away. <laughs> a man, a fan dancer. I you think can't I'll... swim and you won't learn. Yeah, I refuse you to learn. You can't swim. This one can't fucking dance. You can't dance for shit. Neither one of you can drive. No, I mean, I, oh, I can drive, weird, but I don't have a it? license. I don't have a license. I can drive, though. I took driver's ed. You can't fucking I drive. I can swim, dance, and look, drive. Look, look. <laughs> he made his fucking girlfriend drive him all the way to Pittsburgh while he sat there fucking whistling out the window. And he fell asleep at the tunnel. Oh, yeah. no. And woke up out there. That's the worst kind of passenger I there was is. like, oh, great trip, huh, babe? And he actually said to her, why didn't you wake me up to eat? I'm starving now. Well, I was hungry. What are you going to do? Did you call her babe, watching. by the way? She should know better. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Bep, 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 bep. <laughs> this poor girl was watching herself with wet naps while he's fucking <laughs> sleeping his ass. I was tired. Anyway, let's get back to you, Vito. Come on, Vito. All right, turn the fucking mic off. Keep it off the rest of the show. <laughs> You're adding nothing but annoyance by going, come on, Vito. Vito. <laughs> <laughs> Is that being a dick? Just tell me if I'm being a dick right now. I'd like to know. But seriously, Vete. Is this a beautiful girl? I would say so. Oh, boy. That's not a good answer. I think she's... I was very... I The second I met her, I was very attracted to her, and then it just worked out in my favor. She approached you. You don't approach No, women. I approached... I actually approached her because... Like, uh, get, get, just tell us what you did. So we were, we were about to take some shots at the bar of uh, Jameson. And then she was Not the important. bar of Jameson is the name of it. <laughs> and she was her and her friend were standing next to us, and they were like looking for something. And I said, "Let's do shots." Hopefully whoever. for Bigfoot. <laughs> and I said, "Let's do shots for whoever they're looking for." And then they found that entertaining. What did you say? I said, "Let's do some shots for who, uh, for whoever they're looking for." Jesus, she must be an idiot to like that. And then she was. They were like, "Oh, cool!" And then they started talking to us <laughs> about how they were like judging people at the bar and playing a game with each other. What a cunt! And then. Mm. uh yeah, that was how we met them, and then they started talking to us. We watched a basketball game together. No, she, then she asked you out, right? She during the, she said, "Let me get your phone," and I was like, "Why do you want my phone?" And she was like, "To put your number, to put my number oh. in it." She really likes you. Do you think that she's throwing a dog party? I hope oh. not. I think that's I probably that, what though. it is. Yeah, it's definitely. But a dog. you know, that's still a date. <laughs> I know that's true. <laughs> you like you're right. You haven't. He hasn't been on a fucking date since he took a girl out for lobster on a, <laughs> she was a no no call no show. Well, yeah, we didn't a, a do garbage the trawl. We didn't get to the lobster boat date. We had two dates before that, but the lobster date didn't happen. What was the two dates you took her to before? We went uh, to the stand one night. 
And the other time we went, cheap fuck. We went. To, no, we went <laughs> to dinner after. But she said she wanted to see a comedy show. And then yeah. we went to. Dude, you know how I have my uh, homeless buddy. Mm-hmm. That so I go down to the stand all the time, and uh, so a lot of times I get a bottle of water at the Seven Eleven, and there's a guy who stands out front and says, "Give me some change." So I always lay some paper on him. It's like a little good luck thing, right? And then the funny things that happens is. Uh, he would come looking for me when I wasn't there. He would come down, look in the window, and shut. I'm like, "Hey," he goes, it's "Pretty, you know, pretty slow tonight." So I come out, give him some paper, and then I gave him a Christmas bonus. So ever since then, <laughs> we've been like good pals. And then he starts asking me about the comedy. He goes, "How much to to see the show?" And because I asked him where he, he lives, and he said, "He," I go, "You live here in the area?" He goes, "No, I live at the train station." Mm-hmm. Sleep at the train station. Then he got curious and was thinking how much he had to save up to buy a ticket. That is they're so going to cute. see the comics. Now I'm worried about him have a fucking Sixth, Sixth Avenue heartache if he fucking disappears one night. But he looks like crazy fucking healthy. Like yeah. it seems like he could hold a job. <laughs> 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 what if you got him into stand up? <laughs> <laughs> and then he became like the next Kevin Hart. Like he was just like a huge success. He is. He's got the quietest riff. He goes like this. Hey, could you help me out? Get me some accounts. That's all he says. But here's the thing. He's got a name that you would never expect a homeless guy to have. Perry. Perry. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, that seems like too new of a name. You yeah, know what I mean? Perry. That made me feel like he was a lot younger than he looks. Yeah, Perry doesn't sound like a homeless guy's name. You think that you need like an old, gruff, old man's name. Carl. Carl's also a fairly new name. You don't meet any... That's Pop-Up Carl. <laughs> it's like... One like day someone's going to have to have like a... George or an Ed or a Howard you expect yeah. to be... John. Yes, Chris. John. <laughs> <laughs> Gary? Well, you don't expect Gary. to meet Kylie, the homeless. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, my homeless friend, Topher. <laughs> <laughs> so I invite Perry in one day, but I'm sure he doesn't have any fucking credentials to get upstairs. No. Plus, I never see him outside of that thing except for it's to come down and mm-hmm. pick me up. <laughs> Which is the funniest. This would drive a lot of people. Uh, there was a, another comic. He came down and hit me up. And then he didn't ask the black comic for any money. And he go, the guy's like, do I look like I don't have any money? I go, well, you're black. So <laughs> maybe he just didn't want to bother you. Chris, are you coming tomorrow night to see Dan's thing with me? I will be there. Or be what? Square. Uh, Chris told me the other day that it's hip to be square. I go, that fucking song is like in 1984. Oh Why are you just fucking bringing it up? Doesn't have to be old to be classic. And it's hip to be square. Mm. So what are you thinking about for a first date with her? I don't think about it and tell us when we get back, all right? Um, wait, Tony actually has something here. Tony. In Iowa. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah, hey, wasn't Perry the name of the homeless guy that Robin Williams played in The Fisher King? If you are correct, we will send you into the pretty good prize closet. Uh, all right. We're looking it up right now. Um, it's all up to Chris Stanley. Fisher King is the name of the movie. and would be Robin Williams' uh, character. Yeah. Chris, why can't you find the Fisher King? Parry is his name in the Fisher King. P A R R Y. P A R R Y. Because here's the weird thing. In the Fisher King, the fucking other guy was a radio dude. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was kind of based on Howard. Um, sorry, Parry. Parry, not Parry. You get nothing, sir. <laughs> oh, God. You got to be exact to win on this show. Uh, really, really excited about this uh, new sponsor. We have online and it's helix sleep now i'm going to bring this up to both you guys uh mattresses are important to me and but i always look at single guys and they have terrible mattresses 
You want to have a good mattress. Chris goes through a lot of back problems. Vito's also a big guy. Goes through a lot of mattress problems. Well, let me tell you something. There are a ton of online mattress retailers popping up these days. All with a one-size-fits-all solution to better sleep. Guess what? One side uh, fits all doesn't work. Heal Sleep offers something that doesn't exist anywhere else. A mattress personalized to your unique preferences and sleeping style that won't set you back thousands of dollars. Now think of it this way. Look at Chris Stanley and then look at, it, look at Jen. Why would they buy the same mattress? You know what I mean? It's a mattress that feels good to Jen. Chris is going to crush that mattress. And a, a mattress that would hold up Chris? I'm not even sure if Jen could sink into it even a little bit. The best thing about Helix 2 is you don't have to guess what kind of mattress is for you? You can go to helixsleep.com slash raw dog. Take their simple two to three minute sleep quiz. They build a custom mattress that will be the best thing you've ever slept on. And this is my favorite part. They, for couples, they even personalize each side of the mattress. Everyone from GQ to Cosmopolitan to the New York Times are talking about Helix. And once you try it, you'll know why. I love that thing about Yeah, it's couples. amazing. That's like, how have has no one thought of that before? I just That's- think of Chris Stanley and his girlfriend. They share a mattress. How much bigger than you? Just in times. Are you two or three times bigger than I'm her? three times as large as my girlfriend. All right. And we're not making those numbers up. No. No. And exactly. I've met her. She is one third the size of Chris. Now, here they are. When you're sinking in your side of the mattress, right? Instead of what she's doing now, rolling over, she would stay on her side and it would go perfectly. Not only that, this is really cool. It's not just about how firm or how soft you like your mattress. It's even, do you run hot? Do you run cold? Like I know, I couldn't believe that. Your girlfriend might run cold. You're always hot in the middle of the night. And so depending the density of the mattress, they figure it all out and they custom make it for a couple. I'm pretty sure I run hotter than any human being I've ever been around. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people are like, oh, isn't this freezing? And I'm like, no, it finally feels good. And then they're like, are you hot? And I go, I, I could die. I could die. It's so hot in here. So here's what you got to do. Your custom mattress arrives direct to your door in a week. And shipping is completely free. Try it for 100 days, 100 days, 100 nights. If you don't love it, they'll pick it up and refund you in full. Go to helixsleep.com slash raw dog right now, and you'll get $50 towards your custom mattress. That's helixsleep.com slash raw dog for $50 off. Off for your order. HelixSleep.com slash Raw Dog. Go over and check it out right now. Bennington Show is back tomorrow night. Come out to Caroline's Comedy Club, Ron Bennington, Dan Perlman. Together at last. Finally, 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 finally after all these years. The billing of a lifetime. It's a very exciting night uh, for Dan. Come hang out because we're all going to be there. It's going to be fun. Um. What do you think the chances now that Dan has had, you know, a couple successful projects that he wrote and produced? What are the chances you think that we're going to be friends with a very big, big uh, person in the industry? I think that it is without a doubt he is definitely going to be a success. It's just what kind of a success? Like what will what what world will kind of open up to him? I'm not sure. But I think there's no doubt in my mind that the way that kid is, he's so tenacious. He goes after it. He's dedicated to this. I think he's I going to be successful. Dan yeah. is going to find success. <clears throat> Chris is going to find trouble. Yeah. Uh, Vito doesn't seem to have any drive whatsoever. <laughs> uh, and Jen is going to marry success. I think so. Yeah. Maybe Dan. Who knows? Oh, I bet she would for the right price. <laughs> Dan is very, very much um, into the relationship that she's in. 
And she's from a political background. Yeah, I think they've been together quite a few years. Mm-hmm. I think she, she's she been around for a while. They first met in third grade, like Teddy Roosevelt and Aww, his wife. Yeah. That is so sweet. Had sex in fourth grade. Ew. Um, <laughs> fifth grade, there was a little bit of problem. I don't want to get into it, but from what I understand, there was a third partner who ended up that, that she was carrying a disease. <laughs> so which should have been a one night fun three way came to two and a half years of dealing with what can only be called South American dysentery. <laughs> oh God. Oh. Yeah. That's horrible. But and I'm glad it still worked out. Each of them was, had a long worm <laughs> in their bowels. Ew. And I don't want to get too graphic. You already have, but she ate through the, the I say she, it was a big <laughs> female. And once it <laughs> ate through her bowels, they got it out, but she had laid eggs. Oh, oh. No. tapeworm eggs. So just like, all belly wormed? Ugh. Yeah. Oh. Wor- a belly full of worms. So anyway, that's our Dan. Dan Perlman tomorrow night. I know some- Should be a lot of fun. <laughs> I know someone who uh, intentionally gave themselves a tapeworm for weight loss purposes. Did it work? Um, t- Terrifyingly so. Not only do you lose weight, you lose the nutrients. Yes, everything. You say it's so, not good for you. Yeah, she looked was it quite... Was a female? Yeah, yeah was, a man would never do no. that. A man yeah, would accidentally do it. Very sick. Eating clams or whatever. Hot clams that he found in the, in the backyard <laughs> of a bar. <laughs> mm. they, thought, they threw these out instead of just serving them? That's weird. I wonder why. The other night, I saw a guy go into... And it looked like an employee. <laughs> he opens up the trash can next to a bar. He goes in and takes out a bag that had a box in it. He checks it and then walks down the street. I wish he didn't. That's really gross. I think he was stealing from work and through the trash was the way to do it. He was probably uh, doing what I call Chris Stanley, uh, taking himself a couple little sixers Mm. for the ride home. I see. Okay, so you think that was an intentional. He just dropped that thing in the trash. Yes, put it in a certain spot. People are really great about stealing from work. Yeah, that's clever. I was never a big steal from work. I stole from every place. Kind of person. I mean, I'm sure I must have stolen something, but I don't. I don't recall doing it, so I don't think it was anything big. You know what I stole here? Uh, I stole three big screen TVs. (laughs) What? That's. Mm -hmm. I got one of them at my house, and two I sold. Kind of sounds like a felony, maybe. No, not for the prices I sold. It was like 150 bucks a piece. I Uh, move them fast. That's a good deal. Yeah, I don't. Like I say, hey, fellas, something fell off a truck. Maybe you'd be interested. (laughs) It's okay to steal from work. These are large corporations. They expect it. I think, yeah, I think they budget for that. Mm Mm-hmm. I took a urinal out of here when, uh. How? How did you? Well, they were breaking up the downstairs bathroom. Oh, true. Yeah. I just took it. (laughs) I put it in a trash bag, let it go all the way down. Then I went outside, (laughs) went through the dumpster and took it home. I guess now I got be fun. my own urinal in my house. It's great. That's fun. I've never yeah. seen that before. Mm, well, apparently you don't uh, date anyone who lives in a sports bar, <laughs> or you'd see plenty of them. I guess I've never really thought about when trying to figure out my own home decor. I thought, I wish that my private bathroom was more like a public bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I always put uh, little pieces of the newspaper up that I can read while I'm paying. You know, sports section only. <laughs> Today I read an interesting article that said six things that the Eagles need to do uh, to win this. Score touchdowns? Was that one? Score more touchdowns. It isn't enough to score touchdowns. They've got to score more. And no giveaways. Okay. okay? Do they mention stopping them from scoring touchdowns? Yes, big yeah. defense. Okay. Mistake-free and then uh, a, a stingy defense okay. is the way it came up. Uh, someone wrote, Ron, who would you like to see play the Super Bowl halftime show? That's easy. I'd like to just see a college band out there, either Ohio or USC. USC doing Tusk. I'd oh. rather have that than any pop show. I'd like to have Notre Dame show up there. Form an N and a D and start walking while they're playing. That's good. Exciting. There's no such thing as seeing a band. I know. And I actually do like a like a big band sure. halftime show. It is fun. And I agree. No like no better way to hear Tusk. Mm-mm. One time I was in Florida and I saw a big band like that, a big marching band, play the 
Jackie Gleason theme. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is fucking great. (laughs) This is fantastic. I'd rather have this a million times than to see Casey and the Sunshine Band come out and run through their hits. (laughs) That's the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. Don't know the dance. Come on. What are you guys? What's the hurry? We finished the first one. One song to the other. (laughs) What are you looking to find? The stuff. You're trying to find a medley specifically? You're not Chris Stanley. Chris Stanley is the fastest of the fast. Thank you. You're a big... There's no difference than you typing with your fingers than with your toes. And did you decide whether if Chris beats your mom, you would grow the mustache or you would just drink milkshake for the next six months? (laughs) Go milkshake. Milkshake challenge. Dude, don't even say that if you're not kidding, because once you do it with us, that's serious. You're like, in. You can't even be in there drinking water. I'd rather at do, any point. I'd rather do the milkshake challenge than the mustache challenge. No, it'll be six months whether you're physically sick or not. You got to play. Think of the weight. You know how much weight you'll put on. A got lot. this date coming up. <laughs> but maybe I'll yeah. be slim. You're fast dating the dancer. And I'll tell you something about you, my friend. You may be a lover, but you ain't no dancer. I'm not. Helter skelter. I don't see this fucking relationship working out at all. Not if he's going to be drinking milkshakes the whole time. Is she a white girl? Yes. And you're Italian. That's already against you. Yeah. By the way, did you see Steven Spielberg is going to uh, remake the 19... Oh, we talked about this the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Mistake, right? I agree. Yeah. Mistake. Spielberg's life has been just chock-filled with mistakes. One Has he ever another. had a hit? I don't think he's got a. I don't think he's got a fucking bucket to piss into <laughs> or a window to throw it out of. <laughs> it is a bucket, right? What is it? Pot. Oh, thank you. I know when I said bucket, I'm like that sounds odd. <laughs> it works just as good as pot. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, who says that? <laughs> you don't piss in a bucket. You piss in a pot, like a gentleman. Uh, Chris Stangley, I like you in that room. You're never coming back in here. <laughs> Come on. The guy will be back in the room. And you guys will switch paychecks now. But please don't. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Milkshake. That's exciting. <laughs> My milkshake barely being more exciting. Still, you know? <laughs> um, Chris, is there anything I need to plug for tomorrow? Because no way Vito is going to know. Uh, tomorrow, Ron will be at Caroline's Comedy Club in New York City at 730 p.m. Caroline's.com. Four tickets and use the code DAN. For discounted ticket. That's tomorrow night, Caroline. How big of a discount? I'd like to tell people exactly what they're getting. I do not know what the discount is. But and, is and you're discounted. the what of this show? The executive producer. Hmm. But it's a nice discount. How do you know what's nice is? What's nice to you might not be nice to me. I say any discount's a nice discount. I don't I disagree hundred percent. One hundred percent. If I told you what I paid for fucking Tickets to see that movie the other day, you wouldn't believe it. Really? Yeah. I'm like, you gotta be, seriously? <laughs> and I go, is the actor's gonna be in there? <laughs> is there like, no. Q&A afterwards? <gasps> uh-uh. Two tickets, 38 bucks. Damn. Yeah. Damn Daniel is what I yelled out. That is steep. Yeah, it is. Back at I it might again. even paid more because I had to buy online to get assigned seating. And they give like a $3 charge. Made paid forty one dollars for fucking movie tickets. Making Vito's service sound not so yeah, bad. But Vito hasn't used this yet. No, it just came in last week. It takes like three weeks to come in the mail. Yeah, but you've had it for a whole week and hadn't used it. This is how they get over. Yeah. You know? You don't give a shit about movies. I do. I'm using it this week. Maybe I'll use it on my date. He that is. looks oh, fucking don't. hacked, dude. Do not. You're gonna look She's good. gonna dance her way right out of your fucking life. And by the way, that's a bad first date. No, yeah, I'm not gonna take I don't wanna just sit next Where are you gonna to take her? I'm thinking either Mexican or sushi. I don't know yet. What is it? Just fucking restaurant food with you? She's a big fucking dancer. I can't. It's, if I go, it depends. If I'm going tomorrow or next week. If I'm going tomorrow, it's going to be a dinner. Next week, be something better. God damn. And you owe that fucking 300 from going to fucking yeah. wrestling. I'm sitting here complaining about the fucking $38 for two movie tickets. Mm-hmm. This guy pays fucking 300 to watch fucking. Uh, wrestling on a big screen. I got chairs, though. Do you think you'll ever use those chairs, dude? I've, already, I've been making a point to sit in them just because I paid so much. <laughs> they're, they're, they're fucking card table chairs. Yeah, why would you want that? It's not even comfortable. 
I just it's just that I have them and I have to use them. I paid so much money. Does that make sense? <laughs> if this was Big Brother, we'd be voting you out no. this week for stupidity. When does that start, by the way? I think this week. I'm saying February fourth or February ninth. And if I uh, won week. a luxury challenge, and you know who I would take with me? Oh. Becky. <laughs> I think it gives me a good chance to work with her to get her. Oh, that's a good idea. What a fan dancer. I don't even know what we're looking at here. I found the start date. Of what? February 7th. Next I got to leave, Vito. I got to go. I can't hang around here for t- forever. Uh, Chris feels like he's being witty by playing last night's Tiny Dancer. So here you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the complete wit of Mr. Chris Stanley. <laughs>